Hello everyone, and welcome back to Dragon Riders, A Song of the Damned. My name is Peter OPV, and I am joined, as always, by Callum, who plays Aegis, Tommy, who plays Sorrows, Samo, who plays Norexius, and the grown-up stable boy, who is going to be playing the action figure of the Ruined. Quick, think of some Ruined-isms other than kick, 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 and playing kick, drums. Kick, 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 kick. Um... Starting, what's that thing you start saying? Um, I am the ruined. You are the ruined. We are all ruined. We're all ruined down here. <laughs> I am the ruined. I serve the ruined. The ruined. <clears throat> Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hold enough. Come on down, Where Georgie. You're, you're ruined too. <laughs> Where is the loot? Is also good. Anyone up for some cards? I stab my That's feet, sick. it's a problem! <laughs> it's like he's here in the room. If you're not sure what we're doing, if you're new here, uh, it's become a running joke. In this camp, like, we've been playing games together as a, as this group for probably, what, two years now? Since Samo two joined? years sounds about right, yeah. Yeah? And before well, that, like, you guys have played way long. Consistently, so. this group before Samo was probably only about three and a half years, so you only missed out on... Well, not, not even three and a half, because actually Fates and Tides was the only campaign before Samo joined Leviathan oh. 2. And First one would have like been the Genesis. Yeah, but there was that wasn't consistent. There was a gap. There was Songs mm. of Sake, and then there was D-Genesis, then there was um, the Star Wars campaign, and yeah, anyways. Um, point is, uh, we've been playing together for a while now, and... Uh, yeah. This joke about fucking action figures that you squeeze their legs and they say voice lines is only just come up, but it's a good one. Mm. We'll have to when uh, we go over to another campaign setting, we'll have to think of all of your what what what's an Apollo voice line for Sundered Empire? Yeah, but I'm not sure if we do voice lines in, a, uh, in uh, Sunder. Sunder is like the thing intensely. where we break the fourth wall, right? <laughs> That's like mm. our our Sunder thing. I'm not sure. Uh, Anyways. Yeah, we did we did get a budget. Uh, ruin though, so unfortunately, out of like every 20 voice lines, he does say, My people! <laughs> <laughs> they reused some. <laughs> yeah, perfect. The funny thing is, and I, I, I don't know why this is, I, I love all of you to bits, and I find you all incredibly funny when we play together, but I feel like Samo is just a walking meme. <laughs> 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 and the, the latest <laughs> TikToks of anything is, is a. Uh, if it, is the, the latest TikTok is anything to go by. That's over 4,000 views now, buddy. It's Man's got so... a face for reactions. What can you say? Yeah. He knows yeah, how to exactly. farm them. Uh, what yeah, I was going to say I'm is that machine. if Samo's ever away for a session, I've probably just got a voice. Like enough of a soundboard of Samo already. <laughs> with, I think this is a Samo voice line. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it's not a. It's not a yeah, Norris is going to say that shit's fine. Yes. Yeah. We'll make it work. Um, we'll just say he's speaking like demonic or whatever. <laughs> it's just like, oh, she's good. Wait, wait. What can I speak? You can speak Draconic. <laughs> yeah, but like, you can also speak some other fancy shit. Anyways, while Sam was looking up, previously on Dragon sure. Riders. Uh, the group returned to, well, they arrived at the city of Arendis, the capital city of the elves, um, in the forest of Ildari, where they met with King Arnadraste and reunited him with his son and daughter, who they had been, uh, traveling with since the city of Valar. Uh, he gave them some magical gifts as a favor, and while he didn't pledge his allegiance to your fight against Arzamor, he did say he would at least consider it if you brought more allies at a later time. Um, you also decided to help Zar, a elvish scout of some kind, uh, whose village uh, on the uh, a couple of days away from Arendis had been attacked, and um, you all agreed to help him while uh, the Council of Arendis refused. The Council of Arendis seemingly having, you know, lots of different kind of politicians vying for power and vying for the king's ear, basically said, we're an isol isolationist community, we, we, we can't go and risk a bunch of soldiers to go and claim a village back, uh, we'll just leave it and tighten our border. Uh, you didn't agree to that, so as a group you decided to go help them. 
and we left off the, se the session while you were in this village, uh, supported up in the trees, like it's a, like a huge tree house, uh, in the forest of Ildari, where you were fighting uh, against um, some uh, shambling mounds, which Samo was a big fan of the shambling mounds. They were probably his favorite enemy he's ever fought in D&D. &D. Um, Samo scored two critical hits uh, against a shambling mound with some lightning uh, powers boosted up and uh, then found out that they're both immune to lightning and also regain health from lightning damage. So he was having a 10 out of 10 time. <laughs> um, you did that on purpose. I'm, I'm just a little dungeon master man. <laughs> um, and you're my little subbies. Hey, I brought it back. God fucking damn it. <laughs> the return. <laughs> um... And there was also an unspeakable horror, literally the name of the, of the enemy. Uh, the Shambling Mounds seem to be like plant life brought to life, but the unspeakable horror is an extra planar enemy. It's an enemy from another realm. And so Aegis, with Dai's staff that he stole, sorry, acquired, uh, used the banishment oh, spell. <laughs> uh, used the banishment spell and the unspeakable horror, which then vanished off into another realm of existence, wherever it came from. Uh, and where it was stood, uh, this woman here fell out. You don't know her name yet, but she is a wood elf of some kind. Uh, hold on. The stream view is being annoying because it's tracking uh, Celeste, since it's currently Celeste's turn. There we go. Uh, yeah, this woman here fell out. Um, she vomited and then said, uh, whatever you're doing, keep it up to Aegis, and then passed out. She was seemingly inside the unspeakable horror. Um, mm. So, where we left off is with Aegis concentrating on the banishment spell. If he keeps up for uh, nine more rounds, so a minute, then that creature is permanently <coughs> banished that plane and can only return to this plane through, you know, another portal or something. Um, but, you know, it can't, it won't just reappear. Uh, if he loses focus, however, if he breaks concentration, it will reappear. Um, so, scary. And there's Ooh. seemingly only one other, uh, shambling mound left with the Ruined and Kyferia in the process of attacking it. Um, uh, so, any questions before we get started with the combat music? Yeah, I can't help it if I'm the mother's favourite now. Fuck you, die. The mother is a god, he's not just, like, being, like, mummy's favourite. Please don't. I bet you I would be if me and die were brothers. Fucking piss, baby. <laughs> Crazy. I mean, look, Dari's got a very specific thing to serve in the great uh, kind of weave of fate. And that's not yeah, necessarily... I'm unbound. I'm unhinged. I can do anything. Fuck you. Well, you might also have some destiny surrounding you, but um, no, with Dari you. specifically, just because he's, like, chosen to serve yeah, a certain yeah. purpose... Yeah based on destiny doesn't necessarily mean it's a good purpose doesn't necessarily mean it's one that you'd get like you know if you've got a favorite a child of the gods and a, and a you least favorite child you might tell your least favorite child i really need you to do this because it's really important i need you to clean the entire house and tidy everything and spring clean uh, like, so what you're telling me die right now is holding the spoon in the corner of the room while the mother is cooking up some shit I don't understand the reference for sure. It's a very important job. I need you to hold this spoon and stand in the corner while I do all the work. Sure. <laughs> all right. So we start back up then. Top of the turn order, round four, Celeste turn. <coughs> He's going to move over here. He can't get into melee range, so he will draw his longbow again. And just take a shot at that shambling mount. Where's this music from, by the way? Um, it's from a little indie game that came out last year. Not super big. Uh, uh, but Baldur's Gate 3? I've never heard of that. Hmm. Still haven't got out of the grove. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get around to it. Mate, at some point, I'm going to have to join you in a fucking co-op game just to drag <laughs> your ass through that game. <laughs> Every co-op game I've played has fallen apart, so... I've played it four times. Like, I know this game like the back of my hand, but I will drag you through it kicking and screaming if I have to. No. 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 
Uh, anyways, he dealt four damage with that first shot. He will take a second shot. Uh, just as a reminder for people, um, that's a miss. Uh, you can, if your combat UI thing hasn't turned on, you can manually turn it on because uh, it doesn't always turn on automatically um, when we end a session mid combat. Um, you can manually turn it on with the little purple symbol of two crossed swords over on the left hand side. The Ruined. He will use his chains. It's a good thing he didn't have disadvantage because I rolled a nat one on one of those. Uh, he hits. And how much is his crimson right now? 1d6. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, that is 17 damage. And he will follow that up with... his other chain. That wasn't with advantage, whoopsie. He hits. Seventeen points of damage a second time. Fairly consistent. Very nice. Okay. Uh, next. Seventeen will hit you, Aegis, even with your new elvish chain. What? Who's hitting me? We'll find out in a moment. Uh, yes, an arrow 17. hits you in the back. Does. And you take eight an points arrow? of damage. An arrow hits him in the back and he takes eight points of damage. Can I get a concentration check, please? That's... Very nice. Do you turn around to look at who just shot you? Yeah. You can see hidden... Like just kind of lit up in the moonlight is this woman here kind of perched on this tree branch with a, a long bow in her hand drawing another arrow back. Does she have extra attack? She does. She's going to shoot you. This time she doesn't get advantage because you are aware of her. And she just misses that one. Okay. <clears throat> Um, can you want me a perception check as well while you're at it? Mm. Uh, with a 16, you also notice next to her is a panther. Oh. Ah. Kitty cat. There is indeed a kitty cat <laughs> on the table. On the... On, on, on the... <laughs> No, it's this one on the tabletop. On the tabletop, sure. Nice no, handling. Handle okay. <laughs> 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 You've taunted the panther. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, can't remember what it was now. I remember reading recently an article about um, the, oh, that was it. Um, in Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, one of the apes blows a raspberry at one point, which is where they go like... <laughs> and apparently chimpanzees couldn't, or bonobos, because I think the characters of bonobo, wouldn't be able to do that because they've got like completely different muscle structure to us. So like the animators had to work out how to make it look both realistic and also like obvious that he was blowing a raspberry. So I wonder whether a dragonborn would be able to go pss, 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 pss. Maybe he does it for his teeth, so it's like a... Yeah, it's like a it's like a sizzling... Uh, More of a hiss. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Zar does notice you get shot, Aegis. He's going to turn around and try and shoot the person who shot you. Uh, 
Uh, that should have been with disadvantage because she's pretty far away and he's got a short bow. So, he misses that first shot. And I don't believe he has extra attack yet. Or is that the... What's that? 80, 90 feet? Uh, f uh, 95 feet, I'd say. Uh, Alright. Uh, Zar's turn is over. Aegis, your turn. I'm assuming not friendly, Zar. Well. Um, I'm gonna make him make another perception roll. Not sure who she is. Can't see in the dark, but she's shooting at us. No. Okay. Uh, okay, with that then, I will step five foot forward. Mm -hmm. As I then cast a spell at her. I will cast Acid Arrow. Okay, do. Damn. Damn. A 25 enough. absolutely hits. Okay, so on hit, the target takes 44 acid damage immediately, and then an extra 2d4 at the end of its next turn. Yep. Roll them 44. Yep, so that's really hit damage. You really hit it with that, that's not an arrow, this is an arrow thing, didn't you? Yep. God damn, man. I see you played arrow spoony before. And with that, <clears throat> I will carry over to Soros. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Is that actually a thing? Can you, if you uh, if you could stop her from hitting me, that'd be great. You can take cover behind large, uh, well, any enemy that is larger, well, any character that is larger than you. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I can only get there to the moment, but I'm hoping Soros will protect me. I'm a little baby. You can also run between my legs, so you can be in my token. Just... Anyway, uh, buy me a drink this, first. This struggling <laughs> man's turn is going to attack Kyferia. That was very close to that one, but it wasn't. It hits Kyferia. She takes 13 points of damage. I think Kyferia might be the NPC that like suffers the most, uh, like consistently in the campaign so far. God damn. Uh, and then she'll slam it again. Oh, sorry, it will slam her again, even. And that one will also hit. Unfortunate. And that is another 12 points of damage to her. So? Uh, no. And she's also grappled. So she's both down and grappled. Hey. Uh, Nerexius, your turn. <clears throat> uh, I'll dash. Bonk. Uh, and then I'll action search if I can find it. It's not on my. Oh, yeah. Boop. And then I'll attack. Okay, look. That one hit. Sixteen. Okay. <clears throat> oh wait, why why is there a plus two at the end there? Is that already like so four is because of my strength? 
One is because it's magical. Is two like proficiency or some shit? Uh, we may have manually applied the plus two to you. Why do you get the plus two? Uh, because like I sheath my weapon every time I still have a bonus action at least. Like there's like that whole thing. Okay, no. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's... The plus four and the plus two together are indeed your... Uh... That's the damage rolls so efficiency wouldn't go on, would it? No. Uh... Okay, well sure then it's just 14. Coming. Yeah, um... well then that's just added on top of it. Okay. Plus then four. it's only 14, not 16. Because I'm looking at the, like... Uh the code for it is right it is correct it's you're doing 1d8 plus your modifier plus one i just don't know where that plus two is coming from that's fine it is, it is part of your modifier i just yeah all right well then it's just still 14 okay. otherwise it doesn't make sense um so i'll give it an extra two hit points back then <laughs> yeah and bonk all right I'll hit. Uh, oh. Nine. It's okay. Are you done? Ah, uh, that's me, yep. Did I have to roll anything because I hit it when she was uh, when he was grappling, uh, I think? Thing. Unfortunately not. There's nothing in the rules about it having to roll anything to keep on engulfing. Um, Strong boy. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, she's unconscious, so she'll do a death save, but she can't do the constitution saving for her to not take damage, so she's automatically going to take a fail. That's sick. just died there yeah yep she could have that's crazy Zars, your turn Alrighty. sorry i just to get that advantage I would say that's not advantage from there. You're not going for the center of the token, you're kind of like doing a 40% slice or whatever. Huh? To get to Norixius, you're not going through the center of the token. Really? Center of your token. Center of his token. God damn. Yeah. <coughs> Much easier to see this when you're on a grid, but I hate grids, so. Well, you can just reckless attack, no. You can recklessly attack, yeah, that's true. Ah, sod it. Yeah, I'll reckless attack. Okay, so you yeah, attack so. advantage. And I'll take my minus five. Okay. Wait, am I able to actually. Uh, can I recklessly attack and do that at the same time? What is the feature that gives you the plus five again? Uh, it's... Oh, it's Great Weapon Master. Great Weapon Master. Yeah, I think it's something you have to declare. Uh, before you make a melee attack with a heavy weapon, you, you can shoot... Yeah, it doesn't say that it takes cost yeah, an action or anything, and cool. uh, Reckless Attack also doesn't cost anything, so yeah. So, an 18 will hit. Excellent. That's 15, yeah? Uh, I got another plus two for something, haven't I? On uh, damage. Because you're raging, yeah. So, 17. Very nice. And then, do it again. Uh, so that will be a 19. That will also hit. Cool. So that Same is, damage. Is, yeah. How would you like to do this? Hey. I'll um, say I did a running jump and 
slam my axe into his head and then pull the corpse out of the uh, the vines again. Corpse? Okay, that's uh, <laughs> pessimistic. There's a little corpse in there, isn't there? Got the, Kyferia. The... Uh, not not Kyferia. <laughs> the the thing <laughs> there anyway. There isn't strictly speaking necessarily a corpse in there, but yeah, for oh, the sake okay. of, for the, sake of the description, yeah, sure, there can be a corpse in there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm happy to just pull Kyferia out instead. Yeah, that's you can fine. Pull out. <laughs> cool. You pull Kyferia out. I'll put her next to you because you pull her out next to you. Yeah. Uh, you can roll me a. You don't have any uh, like actions or anything to medicine her, but you can roll a perception check to see if you can tell if she's still breathing. Yep. If you want to know, you have no idea. Heat to the oh battle, boy. you're raging. Yes. Yeah, you're covered in bits of of vine. You know, it's, it's a whole thing. Oh, yeah. How also, far away. Very lucky you didn't get a nat one, because I was going to be real mean if you'd gone a nat one on either of those. And oh, God. Okay, yeah. I didn't even She's... think about that happening. <laughs> uh, what's the range of my javelin? I'm... Oh, she's just in range. I got. I get an extra attack because I Is killed it. Is that not an only an extra melee attack though? Hold on. I uh, before, don't uh... know. On your turn, when you score a critical hit with a melee weapon or reduce a creature to zero HP with one, you can make one melee weapon attack. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, curses. Oh, well. I mean, you can hit the ruined if you want. No, fuck you. <laughs> He's not here. <laughs> You'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, is that your turn? Yeah, that's my turn. Alright. It is the panther's turn. Okay. The panther jumps across from the branch down to here. I can't wait to get mauled by a panther. <laughs> and but just to... That... I don't know if this will break Sorry. things, so bear with me. Yeah, it broke things. It's <laughs> uh, okay, I'm Callum's some... gone full robot. Yeah. He did indeed. Uh... I am uh, just trying. Hmm? What you but what? The fucking fish is different. Uh, all right. Just what? note that little symbol on the panther <clears throat> is to indicate that they are underneath the bridge. Okay. Uh, that character is unconscious. Round five. Eight rounds remain for uh, ages to keep his uh, banishment up. Okay, uh, Celeste will fuck up that jump. He'll land in the water down here. It doesn't take any damage, but he didn't make it where he wanted to. Try and target that lady. Uh, that is within range of a longbow, so that's nice. That will hit. And that will hit. The ruins turn. He senses what Sorrow's considered doing, decides to attack him first. Uh, no, he doesn't actually do that. What can he do, though? Uh, what's his medicine like, actually? 
not great. But then Sorrows is in the rage, which means he'd have to drop rage to heal. And the Ruin does have a potion of healing, but I don't know if you'd spend it. This is the trouble with playing someone else's character. I have a potion of healing. Okay, you could use that. Yeah. Fine. That's cool. I can do this without uh, feeling bad then. I was like, we have no idea what Nerexius' medicine stat is, so I don't know whether the Ruin would leave it to Nerexius, but... Uh... I also have a potion of healing. Can also use my... This is true. Um... Oh, see, so yeah, my medicine. Oh, I'm not. Bum, 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 bum. Sorry, I'm just looking at his uh, thingy majigs in the watch. Is <laughs> it 30 feet? Okay. So he's not in range of anyone just yet, so he'll double move. Her turn. Sorry, bud, she's only got eyes for you. Think uh, of bug. Here's my big strong man. A 20 <laughs> will hit you. Oh, yeah. Uh, you take nine points of damage. I get a concentration. Thank you. That's a pass. She'll shoot you again. Twenty-two will hit you. Uh, all right, that is twelve points of damage. Can I get another concentration, please? That's a oh. fail. <sighs> Here we go, boys. Wah, wah, wah. Uh. Oh, good work. You are no longer concentrating on banishment. No, I'm not. Surely you got enough charges to cast the again roll, right? Surely. <coughs> the good news is it spawns back in. Uh, the main problem is that it still needs to save. Yep. It spawns back in. It doesn't immediately consume the body of the elvish woman that was inside it before. So when it comes back in, it didn't seem to need her inside it to exist, and it just basically like sprawls out on the ground and then gives out this kind of like <laughs> chittering screech. I haven't done one of those in a while. I felt like we needed some more creature sounds from me. <laughs> um, and then... She'll move 30 feet over here behind that building. And uh, then she takes the 2d4, right? Yes, yeah. Hang on a second, let me just grab it. There you go. Oh, uh, then plus three? It's a nine damage. Okay. The thing's back, says Zar. Yeah, working on it. He will try and shoot it with his short bow. He misses. Your turn, Aegis. Cool. Um... Let's have a think. Let's have a think. 
Okay, pressing issues first. I will use my bonus action to cast Healing Word on Kytheria. Okay. The whole... When I find it... There it is. I'll cast it a second level. Okay. She gains 11 hit points and is no longer okay. unconscious. Okay, I will then use my movement action and I'm going to jump into the water because this is a raised wall, isn't it? Uh, what, this bit? Yeah. This bit is raised, yeah. Yeah, so if I hide there, that should mean that she can't hit me. Good idea. Uh, um, uh, what can I do? And I am within 60 feet of the creature still, so I could then use my action to once again try banishing. Um, Alright, I'll try it again. Why not? Oh, I'm about to dash Typheria. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I'm about to target the creature. Later. <laughs> it fails. Uh, Dale. Excellent stuff. Very charismatic, yeah. It's not got an awful charisma stat, to be fair. It's just rolling dog shit. Uh, ah, it's banished again. Hey. That'll be my go. <laughs> Alright. Uh, as Kaifuria regains consciousness, she'll like pick herself up and just go, Why is it always me? Yep. Don't know. Ask Pete. Yeah, it's because <laughs> Rogue is squishy and I have trauma from playing Rogues. Uh, Another log button. Alright, see, it's your turn. Um, but, but, would I... Theoretically, could I climb this <laughs> with the proper roll? What? Sorry? Uh, like this, for example. Can you shift bang? To like then get up there and then jump onto the tree. I mean, you can scale a building if you can scale a building, yeah. I mean, from from what I my character can see, would it be easier to scale this? Or would it be easier to make this jump when I step <laughs> there? Like, the can I roll something to see like what would realistically be better for my character to I'm going to say that this angle looks more awkward because if you look at how this tree branch is going, it's like sloping up. Uh, ah, yeah, So you're like yeah. jumping onto unsteady ground, whereas this is more like the base of the tree. That'd be more flat. Okay, then I'll. There's no such thing as like all up moving, right? That's like nope. the thing. Great, now. Dash. Oh, that's sweet. Unspeakable Horror can't do anything about being banished, so it's just banished. Uh, Kaifiria's turn. She uh, picks herself up, looks to you, and says, Where am I needed? Uh, looks to you, Sars. My people! <laughs> but bellowing, as he's well, so big. Your people are pretty far away right now. You're wounded. Perhaps you should help that civilian over there. And I'll point to the woman. Just make sure you get her out of the vicinity before that creature returns. On it. She will move up to this woman and fuck it. Why not roll medicine before trying to buy them and carry them out? Jesus, that sentence caught me off guard then. What? She'll just walk up to this woman and fuck it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. Alright. She manages to... Uh, just to be clear, I'm saying rouse. Not arouse. Rouse the woman. Let it go. What are both? Because they've only just met Sam. That was very good, that <laughs> Come on, let's get you out of here. And that is Kyferia's turn. We will pause a moment for Tommy to receive his food. 
Nettles, bless turn. him. No time to eat it, it's your turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm being it. asked to check if the fish is raw. I'm just saying I feel like Gordon Ramsay. Life review. Is it raw? Look at Did that. I please? What's that? <laughs> what? what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? That's fucking perfect, that's what it is. Good job. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. I made the best fucking chicken last night. I need to make my chicken ramen one day. <laughs> that, that's basically what I did is I made chicken ramen. Yeah, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Ra ramen noodles, uh, chicken breast. Uh, I've got, got like some seasoning that I spread on it and like you know, yeah. coated it and then coated it in soy sauce as well. Then cooked nice. it and then it together with the ramen and soy sauce. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was egg. Put the egg in there. I didn't think to do egg. Now I've got, got no yeah, eggs, but that's a good idea. Six good. and a half minutes boiled. That's the perfect. That's a, that's a good idea. And chop up some spring onions and chuck it in with the ramen. Mm. Mm -mm, and the garlic. Anyways. It's good shit. Yeah. My, my go. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> now I have to mm, it. Churros. Mmm. <laughs> I will run in. Um, what happens if I run off the bridge and land on someone? Um, you want to know what the rules are for Gumba something? Yes. I have no idea. Uh, probably. <laughs> I would. I'm, I don't think there's a. There's probably like some homebrew thing for it, but I'm gonna, just gonna say now. It's probably a grapple check, but I'm gonna say with advantage. On I mean, account of me being very big. Well, on, on account him? of you jumping on top of it. <laughs> and that. Yeah, um, do you want to like deal damage or do you want to grab him? I want to deal damage. So he's like doing like a butt, a butt jump, onto him. No, 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 I'm not landing on my ass. Well, no, I hope not you're landing on him. <laughs> yeah, I'm landing on him. Yeah. All right. Um, athletics check to try and hit it. And then I guess unarmed damage. Um, so uh, the attack will be with advantage. Okay. Which is a good thing because that was an that one. Of course. Roll it again. Oh, God. This is um, athletics again. Mm -hmm. That's a lot better. It's close to an that one, though. Alright. You hit it. Oh, I didn't. Re I didn't hear you say advantage. Thank God for that. Um, uh, unarmored, right? <laughs> yeah. That would still apply the rage damage, though, right? Yeah, I think. Cool. Well, I just like clear, unarmed the athletic, strike. The, the oh, athletics okay. was to hit it, so that nat one was going on your your dice stats. Wrong Good bad. job. But it didn't matter. Just roll damage. <laughs> yeah. That's five. Yeah. Not good enough. And you double move to get there, right? So that's your turn. Yeah. All right. Well, By the way, does that look like a special panther, or is it like like a giant panther or whatever, or is that like just just a panther? Just, just a panther. Okay. Chill. It will respond by trying to bite you. Bad cat. Understandable. Uh, 20 will hit you. Damn! You take 5 rounded down to 2 damage. That's his turn. Uh, Kaifiri will gesture for the woman to go back towards the elevator, so the woman will start to move there. I'm going to say, you know, she's still shaking up, so I'm not going to allow her to double move. All right. 
Nine rounds until the uh, unspeakable horror is banished forever. Celeste's turn. He will see you kind of like diving next to him, Aegis, and go, You good? Hopefully. He nods and will get out of the water. And I don't think from there he'll have an angle on her. Okay, well, it's kind of weird the perspective of this uh, map because it's kind of. It's not completely top down. The buildings kind of like curve outward a little bit to accentuate the height. So I feel like. You could make the argument that he could hit her from there. How do you guys feel? I would assume, yeah. Like, under this roof. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. That will miss. That one will hit. being a moderator. Uh, and she'll take 10 damage from that. Hey. Okay. Anorixis, you can see her from there as well. Uh, she uh, falls over. She appears to be down. But she's a character, so she does get to roll death saves. Go ahead, Anorixis. American History Xer. Do it. No. <laughs> wow, the reference to Samuel got. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> I wonder why Samuel would get that reference specifically. Hey, <laughs> that has no. nothing to do with it. Hang on now, Pete. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Alright, Nor uh, not Norx, sorry, the Ruined will jump down and join you down there. Uh, uh, Zars, and then he will try and hit the panther with a chain. He will hit. Okay. This poor fucking panther just took a chain to the face and died. Oh. <laughs> Panthers aren't super strong. Not a lot of hit points. It's just as well because my next move was going to be to try and kick it off the tree. <laughs> I mean, it would land on its feet. Yeah, like, maybe, but that doesn't mean its feet won't come through its skull afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not sure how Panther's reflexes would be after being fled by like a 700 pound fucking giant. <laughs> <laughs> Is it over? Says Zar, looking over at the unconscious woman that's been shot by Celeste. Um, Celeste, feeling suddenly like he's crossing over into Sundered Empire, looks over at the camera and goes, well, the combat music's still going. <laughs> Don't say that. Don't say that. Aegis, your turn. Uh, cool. <laughs> um, come on, go. What am I gonna do? Uh, ain't gonna do much, but yep. <laughs> the high I'll, action. I'll respond to Zara and say, "Well, judging by how much she was trying to attack me, I guess she's the one that did something to get that creature here." A good bet, says Zara. Uh... Uh, yeah, and I'll just continue concentrating on keeping the fucking thing banished. Okay. Right, oh, so actually, Pete. Oh. Yes. Is it just a rogue thing, or can I use my action to hide? You can use your action uh, to hide. It's it's a rogue thing to use your a, bonus action to hide. Yeah. So I'll use my action to hide. Mm hmm Do I have to roll stealth or something for it, yes. or do I just do it? Okay, cool. It's also, uh, like, in the UI thingy. Mm hmm The hide action. All right. There you go, I just sort of squat, squat into the lily pads. 
Oh, Aegis of the Bog, tell us your wisdom. You just put a lily pad over your head and just go, yeah. oh, this, this should keep me hidden from drone attacks. How deep is this water actually? Like knee height or deeper? or uh, like shin level? height. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, that's me now. <laughs> All right, uh, no excuse, your turn. Yep, I'm still planning on retrieving that woman, so... All right, it'll be an athletics check when you get to the building to try and scale it. Athletics. Easy. Not that easy. It's unfortunately, it's been raining in, in this part of Ildari Forest, and the wood is slick, uh, and you don't make much purchase. That's unlucky. Yep. Uh, that's an action, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, seeing as like I failed currently, I'll turn around and I feel like I have like a pretty good overview of like everything that happened. I'm gonna roll a perception check to see if I can find any other issues, problems, whatever. I'll do that. Find this average going from the roof. <laughs> Fortunately not. Alright, well. No, there's me then. Alright, Unspeakable Horror is still banished. Okay, Fury's turn. She will run to join uh, the woman, and then it is Sorrow's turn. <clears throat> oh, I forgot. How far down is this from up here? Uh, like 15 feet. Alright, can I try climb up? Sure. Uh, that'll be an FLX check. That's success. Nice. Very nice. <clears throat> 15 feet. So grab hold this warning and pull yourself up sort of thing. Basically all of my movement bar 10 foot and up. <clears throat> okay. Again. That's my tip. See, I replaced the combat music with a suspense music to make it feel like you're not in combat anymore. Mm. <laughs> then Kyferia says, Oh, fuck. Guys! Oh, no. What is wrong? We got company, she says, drawing her weapons. Um... Wait, what a... <clears throat> whose turn is it currently? Uh, it was Kyferia's turn. Was it? Okay. It was... Well, no, it wasn't Kyferia's turn. She went before you. Uh, it's Kyferia who responded. It's the thing that moves turn, but you can't see the thing, so... Uh, alright. I can see the thing. Well, if you can see the thing, it was the thing's turn. Uh, so let's <laughs> turn. Thirty feet, and he will shoot his last arrow. His last arrow. <laughs> There's a nat one. <laughs> oh. No. Them's the break. Sometimes he can't really hit anything else, so he just goes wild. <clears throat> Sorrows, do you think the panther makes nice stew? There, so many... <laughs> Wait, is he actually saying this in character? <laughs> no, I can't roleplay for uh, other people. Uh, 
Having heard that there are more, though, he will make the climb. Miley Cyrus is the climb. Right. Would, would there have been panthers where a Soros is from? Uh, potentially. There's quite a lot of jungle yeah. area around uh, the kind of like lower reaches of uh, the Altria Mountains. Zan's turn. He will try and shoot the Shambling Mound. He will hit the Shambling Mound. Yeah. <coughs> and deal Three points of damage. Jesus Christ. Not good damage. The Shambling Mound did that much damage. No, Zar did that much damage. Ah, oh, okay. Aegis, your turn. Okay. Um... <clears throat> what else can I do here? Sorry, I'm just trying to think of what, I'm, what feasibly is going to be better to do. That's fine. Uh, right. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> My thirty. <laughs> Yeah, that's 60 feet. Are you done? Uh, no, I'm gonna cast Ray of Sickness at it. Is that a bonus action? It's an action? You've moved 60 feet, you said. No, I said it's 60 feet away. Oh, sorry, misunderstood. Means I can cast Ray of Sickness. Uh, right, so attack. Very nice. That's an at 20. Very nice. Uh, cool. uh, okay, so it nice. takes 2d8 poison damage, and then if it doesn't succeed as uh, constitution, it's poisoned. Cool. It is indeed poisoned and takes 22 damage. Very <coughs> nice. That's my go. Um, cool. I'm not sure what poison actually does. I think it's just saving throw stuff. Uh, a disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. Oh. But there we go. Then. I don't know how long that's for, but... A minute? Like oh, until the end of my next turn. Oh. So, Fair basically enough. a turn. Is that your turn? Yep. Next year's your turn. Mm. Oh god. Um. Bro, I'm just dashing around. I'm not actually doing anything. <laughs> this is the downside to doing uh, <laughs> maps where the players spread out and enemies come from yeah. different areas. Is that <laughs> some characters end up, especially if you don't have ranged attacks, just end up running around. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Been there before. Um. Uh, I yeah. 
that's me. Okay. Unspeakable horror is still banished. This is the third turn of its banishment. <coughs> Gopheria has no range attacks and doesn't fancy doesn't fancy running in there. Uh, so she will simply back up to be with the woman that she's been charged with protecting. Sorrow is your turn. Okay. I will make my way. Downtown. That's the one. Um, Those faces, what happens with them? Okay. Well, fuck me, right? But wait, what did you say? What happens with those faces as you're moving? What happens with those faces? Yeah. I'm, s I'm real confused. You're, it's the next part of the lyric, don't we? Yeah, you're disappointed. Oh, <laughs> I fucking... I, I don't know. Faces past. I know that bit. Alright, is that your turn? Yeah. You're the closest one. I'll come for you. And it will have disadvantage on these attacks because it is poisoned. 17 will still hit you though. You take 7 points of damage after it's been rounded down. That one will miss you. Less turn. <laughs> you will move in and hit it twice with Van Roken. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, that is his turn. The ruins turn. He does a kind of, uh, you know, like uh, the penguin waddle, like specifically in Happy Feet. Yeah. yeah. I'm imagining that's how he's dashing to uh, try and get into the combat. And he's not here to <laughs> deny or confirm that, so... <laughs> Zar's turn. Yeah. Fuck it. Does he have that yet? Does he have that feature? <clears throat> he does have that feature. Cool. He will bonus action dash. Sammer right now frothing at the bit of that. By the way, dash is a bonus action. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the movement. Oh. I'm you right now. Yep. <laughs> he hits. And deals. Uh, Fourteen points of damage. Aegis, your turn. 
Cool. Uh, Eric says, I don't mean to alarm you, but there's another one on our left. And I will get behind him. <laughs> Go get him, champ. You got you, homie. Um, what else can I do in this scenario? I want the... Um... You know what? Actually, can I do that? I didn't actually double check. Oh, yes, I can, because it is prepared. Excellent stuff. I haven't used it yet, Samo. But I'm going to. So as I said, there's one to our left and got behind you. I will uh, lightly put my hand on your shoulder and cast Long Strider. Giving you an extra 10 feet of movement. Uh, I can't remember how long it lasts for though. I should say on the spell. Uh, one hour. One what hour? Yep. Damn! Yep. <coughs> And it's no concentration, so that's pretty handy. That is correct. Uh, so yeah, enjoy that extra 10 feet of movement. <laughs> I will. I already, I exactly know I'm going to do that. And that is the end of my turn. <laughs> Alright, no excuse. Okay, since that fucko is still so far away, I'll use, I, I'll use my very, very last point to use guidance on myself. I didn't actually target myself. But. It's fine. I'm just using that myself. Um, I have... I'll move... So just to explain for both audience and the other players, correct me if I'm wrong, your Draconic Ancestry charges thing, I can't remember what it's actually called now, your yeah. ascension points, that's what it's called, you can use those to cast spells as well. So not just your kind of like yeah. power-ups that we've seen so far. Exactly. Yeah. But they're pretty expensive for what they give, so it's like... Yeah. Yeah, if I really want to use it, I guess. I'll use you, and that will be me for this turn. <coughs> Is that your full movement with the plus 10? No, it's not. Say, but, plus 10? I, but I can't reach it, and if I go here, ah, gotcha. it can attack me, and yeah. I'm not. That's yeah. Unspeakable Horror is still banished. It's its fourth turn being banished. Kyferia's turn. Now that people have moved in, she'll move in. Bonus action dash so she can get in range. Damn, that fucking thing is getting gank. Poor thing. Uh, she should have rolled that with advantage. Uh, actually, no, she shouldn't roll that with advantage. No mind. She misses with that attack with her offhand. I rolled a 4 and a 2 with those two attacks. Alright, sorry, it's your turn. Okie dokie. <coughs> oh, and it's no longer poisoned because Aegis' turn ended. That is true. I will take the minus five. Okay. Yeesh. Nearly in that one. I mean, you rolled in that one, but it didn't count. Uh, so yeah, that one misses. Uh, 19 will hit. Twenty. Very nice. That is some damage. Damage. Are you done? That's my turn. She'll move up. 
She's not in range yet, but she kind of like spits on the ground and starts moving. It's turn. It's got four juicy targets to choose from. But Obviously, gonna... he wants to go for that big morsel. It's going to continue attacking the person it was attacking before, which is sorrow. So, yeah. yeah. Oh. Well, a nat 20 hit you. Nope. <laughs> Okay. Good thing you're raging. You take 12 points of damage. Okay, I'll take that. Second attack. That will also hit you. And that's 7 points of damage that time. Uh, however, it cannot engulf you despite hitting you with both of those attacks because you are large. Big boy. Yep. Shambling Man continues to approach. But it can't reach Norixis, so. Celeste turn. I didn't know it had 40 feet of movement. I cut, I cut it close there, damn. Uh, double move, though. So. Oh, okay, never mind. So it actually has 20 feet of movement, which is... Yeah. Here's what it is. That'll hit. And that 20 from Celeste. Hey. Does it have a head? <laughs> uh, no. Well, kind of. But also, I don't think that Anroken has that property. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyways, he did indeed do 18 points of damage to it. Fuck it, he'll action search. For some reason, Sam, I don't ask why, but if you were to get hit by that sword, it might deal extra damage to you. Depending on how much of a, of a, of a bastard wording he is. Oh no, uh, to be clear, according to the very specific uh, writing on this, on this sword, and the specifics of Samo, yes indeed, it would do quite a lot of extra damage to Samo. Yes. It does more damage to Draconic things. Well, but would it only do half damage because I'm half dragon? No. Because you've got the Fuck. Draconic type. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, it would deal like an extra, what is it, it's actually Fuck like an extra 3d6 or something. So it does yeah, huh? more damage plus 3d6 to Draconics. Oh, fuck? Yep. Yeah, when he did, like, you remember his first attack in this entire campaign? Hero shit from this fucking character was a nat 20 on a red dragon. He did, like, 50 damage in on one On a hit. red dragon? Yeah. <laughs> right. That is because his sword does an extra 3d6. So he did that is... uh, 2d10 plus 66 and rolled, like, 50. In, in a campaign called Dragon Riders, that sure comes in handy. I mean... Yeah, and maybe you should be uh, the fucking Jesus character the of, fuck out. <laughs> of the world. Yeah, take take it from him. See how well that works. Yeah, yeah, you've done it. I can surely do it. Uh, the ruin's gonna decide that you guys probably have that. He's gonna come help Norexius. Uh... <clears throat> <laughs> he turns to you as he runs up and goes, Have you tried HelloFresh? With my code, The Ruined, you can get 10% off your first free orders. He's a sponsored action figure. I might be The Ruined, but your delivery won't be. <laughs> yes. You're allowed to attack him now if you want. <laughs> And he'll try and use claim. Damn. 
So he will attack. That is a <coughs> nat one. I don't think we've had this come up yet. How do you guys feel about the fact he's using chains, right? Which are kind of a naturally somewhat difficult to wield weapons in the same vein that nunchucks would be and such like. I feel oh, like a nat I one. Th there's room for that to hit Norixius, right? He swings it yeah. wide and... Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, no. Anorexius is good. No, I mean, it's, it's fine. Like, if, if, like... T tell you what, we'll... I will we'll, yeah. un-GM roll this and we'll just roll a D2. One, it lands on Norexius. <laughs> it sure. goes against Norexius and two, it lands against the Rund. Alright, against the Rund. Self. <laughs> I'll re-roll, see if he hits himself. And then does he claim himself as well? He does indeed hit himself. Oh, oh no. Hey, look, Indiana Jones got his cool chin scar from <laughs> whipping himself, all right? It's fine. This is not a True. bad moment for the ruined. Uh, he takes 12 points of damage, plus his <laughs> blood melt. So next time we have to explain to him how he can now hit himself. Yep. Uh, so he took 15 New damage from that. Damn. Uh, and, uh, just, uh, this is not actually going to have any effect on him, but I just, I'm just curious whether he'll pass his own <laughs> dexterity saving throw from claiming himself. I rolled another nap one. He <laughs> pulls himself. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that has to, right? Like, he, like, hits himself and knocks himself on the ground or something. <laughs> That's, yeah, it's double right that one. Yeah, that oh, feels one. Man. It ends his turn, let's just put it that way. <laughs> he, he, he goes... <laughs> And this, it, it like swings fully round and Rixia sees the chain coming from him and goes, oh fuck no, ducks out of the way and then it just like whips him in the forehead and knocks him <laughs> on his ass. That's some Looney Tunes ass shit going <laughs> <Yeah>. on there. <laughs> He's like, don't worry Nerixius, I've got this. Have you heard about Hello Fred? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, anyways. Any who's? <laughs> okay. Uh, that will hit. Uh, the Tsar hits the Shambling Mound. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, 15 damage. Damn. Oh, no. oh uh, he can do this mid through his dual wielding. Uh, he'll also enter a rage, why not? Who's that? Oh. Hmm? Damn, he's a, he's a barbarian? He's a barbarian rogue uh, multiplus. Damn. Gross Angie. That will hit. And I'm doing six damage. <coughs> Just your turn. Hit me. Um, <coughs> I'm not going to do too much for now. I want to save my last few spell slots. <laughs> and Firebolt won't work against these fuckers. Well, they're not immune to it. True. They are resistant to it. Also true. Sure. Um, I'll throw a firebolt then, why not? <clears throat> that will miss. Well, there we go. That's my go. No excuse, your turn. Okay, I'll do the most chat thing ever, and I'll try to jump on the thing and grapple it. Okay. Watch as it returns the favor. I'll roll my 1d4 for my guidance. Yep. That was 6 <laughs> It rolled a 23. It is not grappled. 
it. Well, no, I'm just standing here. Well, that was your action. Doing anything else? Um. No? Okay. No, no, uh, no. Unspeakable Horror is still uh, uh, banished. Kytheria will... Nat 20 it. Very nice. Yeah. Excellent. That is 13 plus... 46 damage in total. Whoa! Look, How much damage? 46. <coughs> I rolled... Mother. I rolled five sixes on that sneak attack critical <laughs> hit. Hell yeah. <coughs> what the fuck? Yep. Okay. That, that is indeed is a disgusting. sneak attack. Now a fucking girl. Oh, that is this. Yeah, she uh, jumps on top of it and basically stabs it repeatedly in the back of its neck uh, until she just basically rides it down as it falls onto the ground and just turns into dead husk of moss and lines. She said enough. A villain oak now. She's done. <laughs> she's, she's... Yeah, I mean, she's not a rogue barbarian multiclass, but she's also in a rage right now. Yeah. <laughs> Plus two damage. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it's your turn. I'm, uh, gonna relax my pose a little bit and just stare at Kytheria, basically frothing from the mouth. And, uh, I'll just say, it, impressive. I'm gonna chug down a health potion. Uh, as you say impressive, she will stand up and then just stab it one more time with her <laughs> rapier. <laughs> Alright, chugging a health potion. My fucking HUD is glitched. There we go. <clears throat> That's a lot of fucking dice, holy shit. Alright, 24 hit points. Very nice. A lot of ones as well. That was a dreadful roll. But you're, you're was, back oh. in green. Horrible roll. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong, it's perfectly fine, but the roll itself, yikes. Yeah. Wait, Frank, I won't make another fucking potion for you again. No, we got nothing wrong with no, the potion. No, 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 no. My luck is the problem. The problem is he's raging, so he kind of like goes, and just like half <laughs> goes down his, out his mouth and down his You ear. only get lesser healing potions now, Tommy. Oh, ran away over here. Been demoted. No greater potions for you. Like the greater potions. No, 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 no. You can have the two D four, but it's fine. Old four ones. That's what I'm talking about. You can have. You of can my have... eight rolls, four of those were ones. You, you can don't have the forty four. <clears throat> and there's two twos. Uh, I I don't know because my screen has gone black. You should probably refresh. Yes. The HUD issues were a sign that something bad was happening. I'll end your turn for now. We can always come back to it if you wanted to take your move action. Um, I was just going to move near to where the uh, the monstrosity might pop out again. Okay. Oh, you got that one, Pete. Oh, well, you're on top of where the monstrosity might pop out again. So if you want to be like where... That is, rather than the Stanley Mound, you can just stay where you are. Okay, yeah. Okay. Shambling Mound's turn. Hello, it's going to attack you, Nerixius. An 18 will hit you. Oh. You take 12 points of damage. Oh. It will attack you again. That was nearly a nat 20, but a 21 will hit. Oh, yeah, and concentration, please, for your guidance. Oh, mate, uh, there was only one time use guidance. Is it only for one turn? I'm pretty sure it's just one use as well. Mm. So, because I used it already. Yeah, but, but it's up to one minute. But I've used it already. Doesn't it go away, then? No, it's a concentration spell that lasts one minute. Oh, and then I can so use it. You can continue okay. to use that d4, I'm pretty sure. 
double check, but I'm pretty sure. Once for the, oh, once before the spell. Oh, you're right. Never mind. Yeah, the spell then ends. So yeah. like... Doesn't work the same as it does in all these gates. Uh, fine. Less would have been that. Yeah. Uh, so twenty-one will also hit you. Yep. So you take another seventeen points of damage on that. Yeah. And you're now grappled. You can roll to ungrapple yourself on your turn, but you are automatically grappled by being hit twice by it. Yeah. As it starts to engulf you. Sick. Celeste will double move. The ruined. That wasn't very funny. <laughs> and he will pick himself up and <clears throat> spend half his movement getting over there, and then he'll attack it twice. You'll hit. on that d8. 12 points of damage on that attack. That one will miss. action dash and I'm going to try and make him acrobatic over those stores because otherwise he's going to lose out on his rage if he doesn't get it into melee range that's a fail <laughs> he trips over these stalls Zara's not not showing himself to be particularly great is he no, I mean he did like 15 damage before he's trying his he's best he's trying his best Aegis it's your turn yay Um, once again, asking for your help. Fine, I'll help the autistic dragon. Hey, <laughs> that would be all wrong. Mildly. <laughs> <laughs> I will cast Healing Word upon him. Oh. Damn! Okay. You regain 10 hit points. The homie. And that will be my go. Okay, look. Eryxius, you are currently grappled. Can I get a constitution saving throw from you, please? Constitution? Mm-hmm. Uh, there. Wait, that's not a saving. That's a saving. That is a fail. Do I so, have you are going to take I don't. 2d8 plus 4 damage. So you take 12 points of damage. Good thing you healed me. You can that now is. spend your action trying to ungrapple yourself. Uh, athletics. Athletics or acrobatics, your choice. Let's still up it. Okay. 21 versus... Yeah, you're ungrappled. Fuck. Um... Was that, like, an action? Was that, like... That was your action to ungrapple yourself, yeah. Okay. But in that case, I'll still use... Uh, second beat. <clears throat> That's abysmal. 
Well, um, you're back on how many hit points you had before. Seven. He just healed you. <laughs> no, I, I, plus uh, seven, because my, my fire level gets added as well. So it's oh, okay. the roll plus my You should my fire modify level. your second one to do that, but okay. Um, uh, that's fine. I, I think it used to do that. I don't know why Wait, you're level seven? No, but it's plus no, five, but... so it's seven oh. in total. Yeah. Oh. Wish. Um... Are you done? Uh, yeah. Okay. Doke. Unspeakable horror is still banished. Kyferi is done. It should work properly, as far as I can tell. I don't know why it didn't work then. Okay. Is whatever, we can always just manually add it. Yeah. Uh, she will move up to there for now. Sorry, it's your turn. Okay. That will require an acrobatics check if you're going to try and jump over those stools and that table. Yeah. You can make it that. It worked really oh, well for so, Zar, so, you know. How about a strength <laughs> check where he just pushes them to the side? He just walked through them. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. You know what? He's big. I, I, I've been convinced. Athletics check if you want to. Okay. Cool. Hell yeah. Fuck, nice. Yeah, that's enough. Bring him. Sweet. Could that be convinced to give him an inspiration point because that's very much a character? <laughs> Walking don't. through some barrels. <laughs> don't, don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Good enough. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not wrong. It is a character. <laughs> I'm going to take the Reckless and the minus five. <laughs> also turns yeah, out that uh, oh, no. the Songs world is either Sifu or Elden Ring you, you pick, and all the furniture explodes as you walk by it. Sifu <laughs> <laughs> is such a good game. Why I'm, you I, I'm actually not loading that shit right now. Oh, you are uh, Recklessly Reckless. as well. Reckless, gotcha. yeah. Uh, well, an 11 will miss. Yes. Yeah, I recently replayed Absolver a little bit. That was fun. Doing the DLC that I never really touched. A uh, twelve or so. That's Absolver. some trash rolling. Slow caps previous game. If you've never played it, would highly recommend. It's kind of like a very light Souls like, um, but it's multiplayer. There's not a huge player base anymore, but like you can play against other <coughs> people, and it's kind of got a card deck building element to it. So you build a deck Ooh, of your combat moves, and so like there are loads of different moves that you can assign to like your different. Uh, you got like left and right attack, and then left and right foot <coughs> attack, or no, left and right front attack and left and right back attack. And have different stances that you can switch between, and then you can have a deck of different moves that you have for each of those. So you can really kind of customize your fighting style. And so part of it, which unfortunately I don't think there is as much of anymore because there's not as much of a player base. But part of it, when it was like first out and you were playing against other people a lot was recognizing the animations of different combat styles that people had and learning when the counter was and when the dodge was for different attacks and such like. Because like some of them would be like, a character would like do a little bit of a spin and then do a backflip and try and kick you. So, and that would look a lot like a spin heel kick instead as an example. And so you'd have to like learn yeah. the difference between them. A lot of fun. Okay. Um, all right, Sora's missed both of his attacks. Damn. Reckless indeed. You were so reckless. Walking through furniture, not not giving a damn about, you know, the the um, feng shui of the environment. Shut those barrels, who's who, though, am I right? But th there are no barrels there, those are stools. <laughs> stools, okay. <laughs> I thought they were barrels. <laughs> They're just scrap wood now. Makes no difference to me. True. Alright, 
she double moves. It's the Shambling Mound's turn. It's going to attack you again, Norixius. <laughs> Don't hit me, scary monster, please. That'll miss. Okay. Fuck. But a 19 will hit you, so 26 in total. You take 12 points of damage. Oh, thank Guys, I'm still up. Guys, it's all good. <laughs> so that's done. I think the little fucking elvish princess could not come and stab me out and die. Last will maneuver around, he will attack it. That was supposed to be an advantage, whoopsie. Ruins down. All right. Uh, ten damage. That was pretty. That's a nat 20. With 2d8 plus 4 on that attack because of the critical hit, I just did 8 damage with the chains. And then with 2d6, I did 7 damage. That's abysmal. Mm. I'm truly channeling Alex's damage rolls here. I was going to say, Alex, <laughs> Alex never left. <laughs> He's still with us. Hey, Aegis, it'd be a real shame if this woman rolled a nat 20 on her uh, death saves right now and just got it's... back up and shot you in the... Son of a bitch! Anyways, uh, Zar's turn, he picks himself back up. <laughs> Wait, did no one bound, bind her? Hmm? No one bind her hands? No, no one got to her. What? Uh, Zara's no longer raging. I said it would be funny if if she oh. rolled a nap twenty. I'm just surprised no one did that. She was in a down state. Yep. I tried, but then uh, the the other two spawned. I was like, I mean, she's downed and this is like an immediate threat. So I mean, stop. And now I'm dead. So I don't know if like I did the right. Probably. <laughs> All right. Zar hits it once. Aegis, your turn. Uh, Aegis is your banishment, by the way. Yeah. Hey, I can't do much, man, so I'm just going to use my hide action again. You currently can't hide, you've got no cover from it. Assuming you're trying to hide from the Shambling Lord. Oh. Yeah, okay, guess I'm just gonna... <laughs> if you had uh, the Ruins Cloak and the Hood up, you'd be able to. Yeah. No, I'll just... I'll do, I'll do nothing. Okay. Uh, Norexia, it's your turn. Uh, yeah, okay, fuck the whole grappling thing, man. I just wanna see this guy. Um, wait. Uh, is... I couldn't stand there because this is like kind of where Soros is attacking from, right? Correct. Okay. <coughs> okay. Eleven. Oh. That will miss. That's a fifteen, though. Fifteen will hit. The plus two is not there for some. 
Uh, that's a nine. Okay. That'll be me. Speakable horror is still banished. Okay, Furious turn. So people can run between your legs, right, Saros? Yes. Sure, will run between your legs then. Let's go for another 40 plus stealth attack. Why not? That one's another nat 20. <laughs> Hell yeah. Holy shit. She's got advantage. Yeah, she so. is. Get She's it, fully in the villain oak now. Pretty shit on the on the just standard rapier damage, not gonna lie. But with a sneak attack on top of that, let's see what it comes out as. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, 29. It's not bad. That's still crazy. I mean, this is the thing with rogues. A sneak attack is already a lot of damage, so when it becomes a critical hit sneak attack... <coughs> it's absurd. Yeah. <laughs> and it only gets bigger. I mean... All I'm going to say, if you're currently watching the VODs of Baldur's Gate 3, just know there are two <laughs> moments. I have a period, and we're currently in that period, where I am rolling shit non-stop. But there are two moments later on in the campaign where I almost one-shot two fairly major characters with critical hit uh, sneak attacks. So, you know, it will yep. balance out on the end. Anyways. I think when it came to, like... Single target damage you did like the most. Uh, in in one hit, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, in yeah. in just like one v one, it would be between uh, Abris and Kral. I don't know which one would take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you guys were the most consistent damage dealers by by far. Yep. Hell yeah. Uh, meanwhile, you and I both had our <laughs> moment where we just went fuck this game and changed class. <laughs> <laughs> like, the start of the game was so tough. At the end, I just nuked everything. That was fine, but... Yeah. Uh, the oh, the start was so tough. The worst part is the episode where I've changed into a bard and I go on my fucking rant about my abysmal roles is one of the more popular Baldur's Gate 3 videos we've uploaded. So... <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, Cyrus, it's your turn. It's not 5,000 uh, yep. views, though, like your lightning revelation, which we're nearly at 5,000 views, by the way. Yeah. Still traumatized from that. Hold on. Uh, Recklessly reckless and, and, and the minus, the minus five. five. Yeah. You don't actually need to reckless. You've got flanking with Celeste. Oh yeah. So, uh, but uh, 16, 16 nice. will hit. Excellent. Chop it in. So that is 22. 22. Very nice. Oh, hey. Excellent. Actually, hold on. This wouldn't it be would twenty-four. Five, so nineteen. It would have been a twenty-four damage, no? So also plus two rage. You're right. You hit. You killed it on the first hit. Never mind. I mean, you oh, hit okay. Hit as well, but you do a Kai Fury, You just keep on hitting it as it's dead. How do you kill <laughs> it? <laughs> um, take my usual. Just swing it in the head and then yank out anything that's inside. All right. Soros did a shit ton of damage from that damn. His uh his weapon great weapon master he good. Yeah. Silence falls over the village as the last shambling mound falls with a chittering as all the vines go still. You basically did what they all do to Stormbreaker at the end of the boy season two for this thing. <laughs> Girls get it done, baby. <laughs> and Aegis, you continue your concentration, just keeping that unspeakable yep. horror at bay, but silence has fallen, nothing else seems to be attacking. You get the sense that you're probably scot free. What do people um, do? Who is the scot? Why are we free of them? I will try to scale this wall again. Because I want to retrieve whoever that mysterious lady is up there. Okay. Mysterious dead lady. Yep. She might be stable. I'll just. I'll just. Like. You might have regained yeah. a hit point and then might have made her run away. Uh, roll me an athletics check then. 
Um, dup, dup, dup. That was so That's close to that one. <laughs> yep. So close to that one with the guy with two hit points left trying to precariously parkour. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm doing it. Yeah, you make it. Fuck it. Yeah. Okay. You make well, it over there. Um, is she cut? Like, is she okay? Uh, she okay. has an arrow in her chest. Roll me a medicine check to determine whether she's alive or not. Uh, You're not sure. Um... I mean, I feel like a lot of time passed that this wouldn't have mattered even if I hurry up now, so I want to loot her first. Okie doke. She has a dagger, a spiked cestus, which is a glove. Mm -hmm. uh, she also has a cloak of elven kind, similar to the ruins. Um... Leather armor. Uh, she has 16 arrows. She has a staff. She has a hunting trap. She has uh, traveler's clothes. And she has her bow. Can you make me an arcana check on her bow? Hey. I will. Hey, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, we're 15. Yeah, her bow is definitely magical. It has runes on it. And it is magical. You can spend a little um, bit of time identifying it if you want with that 15. I'll take both the cloak and the... Um, the bow, obviously. And, I, f I mean, anyone else can come here, but I feel like my character's bad medicine check and her having, like, an arrow in her chest. If my character doesn't know if she's alive, I feel like it makes sense oh. that... 90 gold as well, Keep which it. I will split between the party. Yeah. Nice. Um, I feel like he would just assume that she's not alive anymore. That makes most sense to me. So, okay. I'll just leave her here. Are you sharing with your companions, which just to be clear, I'm talking about Kyferia and Celeste. I'm not talking about anyone else who's currently here. Yeah, I think that's that makes sense. So that would be 90 divided by 6, which I think is 15 off the top of my head, but I will do calculate. That sounds right, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cool. We'll add 15 gold to your inventory. I'm not going to do it for you, because I'll do it for the companions. Uh, if... <coughs> I will also Excellent. do it for the round, though, obviously. Oh, damn. Uh, Celeste and Kaifiri have exactly the same amount of gold. Funnily enough, um, the Ruined has more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just to note, you did loot the bow, you didn't loot the arrows. Did you want to loot the arrows? Um, sure, yeah. Okay. Cool. Which means you can now use the bow. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the thing. Um, do I know if Kaithira uses the bow? She doesn't. She didn't previously, but she's dexterous. She has thrown weapons before, so a ranged weapon might be a good fit for her. Yeah, picking that. Even though Celeste is actively using a bow, right? He is actively using a bow, and he is out of arrows. Like you can see, his quiver is empty. But he is much more of a melee fighter than he is a ranged fighter. It's just that he has a ranged weapon for when he's closing the distance. Mm. I mean, yeah, Kaithiria is like one of us, so I'll give her the the bow and the arrows. Very nice. She's an NPC, so if you want to do do it, just, or should I do the trade? That's fine. I've done it. Okay. Cool. Uh, I'll tell you what you've just given her then, since uh, you've given it. Uh, you've given her a vicious longbow. Uh, it's a real shame I didn't score a nat 20 against Aegis with this, is all I'm going to say. Yeah. Uh, a, a vicious longbow, when you roll 20 in your attack roll with this magic weapon, the target takes an extra 7 damage of the weapon's type. So it would be uh, 2d8 
plus two, plus seven. So two D eight plus nine. Yikes. That's some damage. Shit. <clears throat> All right. While Nerixis is looting, what are other people doing? Uh, hmm. I'm just maintaining concentration until the. <clears throat> I mean, now that we're out of combat, that would pass pretty quickly. It was four rounds left, so twenty seconds. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you passed the concentration check. You're no longer concentrating on the banishment spell. Breathe a sigh of relief. Well, the creature's gone. Saved us from a lot of trouble, I assume. Well, that was the thing that seemed to be leading these things, says Zar, gesturing at the shambling nouns. I would say that you, my friend, probably saved us this day. To be fair, most people are doing all right health wise, but still. Yeah, most. <clears throat> yeah, you and Aegis are kind of doing the worst. Uh, <laughs> Kyfira is not doing great either, but yeah, she's up. It was quick thinking, was all. It was just... Probably saved us a lot more time and people's limbs, put it that way. You must be a powerful wizard to be able to cast that sort of spell, says the uh, elvish woman. Uh, I mean... Roll... Sure. <laughs> Anyone who wants to can roll me a history check. I'm sorry, Norexius, you're going to have disadvantage with this history check. Damn. Considering how good my fucking history is, I'm going to pop off. I said. You did in pop fact off. pop off. <laughs> it's uh, on that one, that's all I need. Alright, Aegis. Uh, she's got an interesting accent, an accent you can't place even with a 25, but uh, she's clearly not from around here. Hmm. Um, can't place it at 25? Because. Well, I'll give you this with the 25. You know that you've definitely never been to wherever this accent's from. You maybe, with a 25, would have heard people with this accent who would mostly have been sailors. And, like, not as in, like, people who sailed into Valar or whatever. People whose living is sailing the world. That is, like, they live and die on the sea. Uh, what did the woman Rixis? I mean, as far as I could tell, she was dead. I'm gonna look at Zar when they bring that up and say, Do you have any idea why we would be being shot at? I've got a suspicion, he says. It's tenuous, but the panther, <coughs> possibly. Gave it Go away. On. There was a woman who was banished from Rendis some six moons ago. She had a panther as a companion. What was she banished for? She, uh, was a practitioner of dark magic. Do you think she could be responsible for this? I don't understand enough about magic, but I never saw her summon these sorts of creatures, he says, straightening his back. <clears throat> but I suppose anything's possible. I roll an arcana. You can, and Nerixius, well, anyone can roll an arcana, but Nerixius, if you do it, you have advantage. Very nice, sorry. Uh, I'm no longer in this conversation. <laughs> Very nice, yes. Nerixius. Um, However, right. I would like to roll athletics to climb the. Uh... Yeah, you can roll an athletics to climb the building. 
Hey, um, God damn. And stuff. You do some cool Assassin's Creed parkour stuff over the building and get <laughs> over to... Uh, and when I say cool Assassin's Creed parkour stuff, I mean specifically Assassin's Creed Unity, the one with the best parkour. Tasteful stuff, Pete. Hey, uh, the most fancy person. Yes, indeed. Roll me a medicine check. Okay. Get higher than a four, I think, is what Rixie has got. Yeah. Well, contrary to everyone's belief, my medicine checks aren't good. <laughs> hey! That's better. But I got That's higher better than, than me. Four. I'm going to tell you this. A five, I'm going to say, is enough. She dead. She has an arrow yeah. through the heart. She bled out. Fair enough. Uh, I'll... I'll pull the arrow out. In fact, she has three it. fails and one one success. Uh, yeah. uh, I take it she she's got nothing on her because Nurse just took everything. Uh, he didn't take everything. He took most of the things of value. <laughs> she's got a dagger, a spike cestus, leather armor, staff, hunting trap, and clothes left. And uh, dungeoneer's pack. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. But she's a pack. Uh, well. Either way, uh, I'm gonna we're gonna take the body. Uh, I'm gonna take the body with us. I don't know whether everyone else wants to, but okay, you can do that. Uh, and with I'll your nat twenty, I can say you can just safely get back to the village with the body. Lovely stuff. Well, all the way back to the village with the body. Yeah, this village that you're standing in. Oh right. <laughs> I don't know, this is a city. <laughs> uh, I just run all the way back to the other village. Revisiting those arcana checks then. So with a 19 and with a natural 20, you're both aware, but no excuse, you're maybe a little bit more aware. Summoning extra planar beings is very, very difficult to do, like high level magic shit. It is significantly easier to do it if there's already a rift open. So in other words, if you think of all the realms as being kind of their own um, kind of glass spheres, right? And so the realm of Taral is a glass sphere. If there's already a crack near where you are, then summoning something from outside of your sphere from another sphere into yours is much, much easier than if the surface is perfect. And over time, those cracks heal. So when we're talking about, you know, the the you know the rifts and what have you they're not around for weeks and weeks and weeks or months and months and months but sometimes things happen such as beings coming from another realm that leave a rift open so if a being were to teleport into this realm for instance Nuxis you did it quite a while ago at this point you know a couple of weeks ago but when you came to the realm of Tural however you did that you would have left a rift behind that someone could potentially manipulate if they wanted to. So we could take an educated guess somewhere around here that is that... There's some something that chose to come rather than being summoned. Would that rift be like something we can like look at? Is that like a place we can go to and there's that rift? Or is that just the area around here that makes it easier? Uh, you would be able to go there. How to find it, you're not sure. Okay. I mean, if you can think of a way to try and track one thing, by all means. But, like, they're not, like, big glowing green tears yeah. in the sky or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like that one time there was a big green glowing scar in the sky and Songs of the Forsaken. It's not like that. No, that was another no, thing. no, no. <laughs> um, but, yeah, yep. with, a, with a nat 20, I'll give you just a little bit more juice, Norexius, which is uh, all the information I've already given, but also on top of that. Um, so, yeah, basically 100% something teleported now with a nat 20 you know that the way that teleportation uh works in the world of songs is there's different types of teleportation you've got teleportation in terms of like casting the teleport spell like aegis has done with dice stuff before that is essentially hop skipping in the same realm there's a slim chance you could end up in another realm but it's basically just like hop skipping in the same realm. Yeah. The older way of teleportation uh, is with standing teleportation portals, right? These are very, very old, presumably built by the giants. Uh, some of them are like in major cities. For instance, there was one in the Magical Academy that Aegis' sister taught at. 
the way that those work is that you don't teleport from one place in Tural to another place in Tural. You teleport to another realm of existence where essentially space is compressed. Think of it kind of like the Never Realm in Minecraft. And you would traverse that other realm to get to another portal, and that other portal would open up somewhere else in Tural. So, theoretically, if someone had used one of those old teleportation circles, that would be potentially the rift there, because that isn't to another realm, or it's something coming from another plane of existence. So it could just be someone using a teleportation circle to end up somewhere nearby, or it could be something from another realm of existence. Okay. Lore dumps. I couldn't tell what way this would go, correct? Like, I wouldn't know if someone traveled to another plane or if something came from another plane into our. You're plane. not sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I'm good to go whenever. I don't have anything else to. Uh, Aegis, you mm. return with the body. I do return with the body. Apologies for me being so void, Zar, but you reckon there are any other survivors? He turns to the Elvish woman. <clears throat> Did you see any? She shakes her head. No, I think not then. He then, I would suggest we head back as soon as possible to uh, show our findings. He nods and will approach and look over the body that's like slung over your shoulder and he'll turn back to Sarah's and go, Yeah, that's her. Very well. <laughs> Is our duty complete? Or would you like to f try and find the source? The source? says was it not her um so we got banished right over there and i'll point at that glob i'll i'll relay the things that um sorrows would have surmised about rifts okay because I, I assume there is a chance that something else might come through seeing as a rift is there right potentially but the theory is that she would have manipulated the rift being there to summon these things. So unless the right. is trying to do the same thing. Um, okay. When that you case. relay that information, uh, everyone can give me an insight roll. Does that include me? I said everybody. <laughs> okay, that's what the short <laughs> thing is. It was because of something I said. My fucking screen's gone black. I don't know what's going on with my Android today. I have to refresh. Your cookie's up to date. Your driver's up to date. Your GPU up to date. Everything is golden. I don't know what the issue is. Your cash. I haven't actually in a while. That might help. Maybe, yeah, you yeah. try turning it off on uh, off and It's true, IT have you tried turning it off and on again? Oh, okay, I have cleared my cache recently. Oh. I'm scared to turn it off and on again. I've got so many tabs. Does you use uh what's it called, don't you? Opera. Opera, yeah. Does it not have the Control Shift T shortcut? What does that do? Reopen tabs that you had just closed. Oh, it does it automatically. But um, <clears throat> if I actually, um, if I lose them for good, like if I actually close one, or if it forgets after I close it, I can't do it again. Oh, so Google Chrome it usually remembers. Like even after a restart. Anyways, uh, are you able to do okay. your insight? Yes, no, I can. 
Hey. hey. Sorrows is the only one who passed. Uh, at you explaining what your theory is about the rifts and such like, you see Zar and this elvish woman exchange a look. Somewhat of a guilty look. At least from is the it, elvish woman. Is there something that we should be aware of? Uh, it's, uh... Nothing that you would need to be concerned about, says Zar. And he rolled a nine on his deception check. At that point, the elvish woman will just put out a hand, kind of placating him, and just say, That, uh, I did arrive by teleportation circle in this forest, yes. So... It sounds like potentially it was me who caused this tragedy to be able to occur. I see. Well, I wouldn't blame yourself. It's not like you knew this would happen. Yes, the way I would describe it is you just sort of left the door unlocked. And if I were to do that in my home, and then it were to be robbed, would I not be at least partially to blame? In this case, you were not aware of any door to be left unlocked. But now you know. If it were to happen again, shame on you. Oof. <laughs> Uh, the way I see it, only this one's to blame, says Zar, gesturing at uh, the woman slung over her Aegis's back. Or shoulder. Agreed. So you're no longer raging. Fuck. Ah. That button doesn't make you go small again, it just makes you go big. <laughs> he turns to Aegis. I agree. We should head out. Now that this place has been cleansed, maybe in time more of our kin can return. But for now, I do not wish to stay. I hope you may find some peace. Even if it takes time. Thank you. Also, I'm not saying it will happen again, but, you know, if you have a powerful magic user like some, you may may have may have help to uh, get them to make a scroll of banishment or something. I'll, um... <clears throat> what is, uh... Do we have need of this body? The king will be able to recognize my descriptions, but if you want proof, I suppose the body would serve it. I'm holding it. <laughs> you're still holding this whole time, you've been holding this body. Yeah, I'm just, just <laughs> over my shoulder. Dead weight body, okay. She wakes up. You call me dead weight. <laughs> nice. Dead way. Place her down, you just don't 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 do what you think you're gonna do. I like the of insight. <laughs> That's a pretty good insight. Hey, uh Tommy, are you planning on beheading this woman and taking her? Yeah, I am. Yeah, 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 that's exactly what I'm planning on doing. All right, Aegis, you are yep. aware of that. <laughs> I am aware of that. that. That's that's too barbaric. And I'm going to walk off with the body. <laughs> uh, I'll re reply to that saying, 
and slaughtering town of innocence isn't. What I'm saying is the body's more refined. Not Probably when we not. get there, it won't be. Mmm, decaying body. Yeah, I'm still walking away. <laughs> I didn't say they're watching you give like four or five swings trying to fucking decapitate the head. Alright, one and swing. One swing. As the group starts to walk off, uh, the elvish woman will say to Zar, but like loud enough that everyone can hear. I know I'm not from this place, but is it okay if I travel with you? We are not from this place either. I uh, would like to formally request I travel with you back to Orlandis then, she says, and she gives you a slight bow. I'll, um, I'll look at Zar. She's not been there before, but uh, well, they accepted you lot in, so she at least is of our kind. I'm sorry, uh, what was your name? My name is Gion. Gion, or Gion, did you say? Gion. Gion. Now revealed to everyone. Oh, wait, no, Again, not... not writing anything down. No. Unless they survived three sessions. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you from, Gion? I am from a faraway place. You may not have heard of it. Uh, the village of Palator. Um, I will roll insight. Wouldn't be an insight, it'd be a history. I will roll history. I pity that bitch is lying. <laughs> okay, not the net one. I am going ham on these net ones. You have never heard of the village of Palator. Um, doesn't really sound like the naming convention of many places around here. As in, like where you are from or any of the places you've traveled to. What is that, a type of cheese? She is from a slice of... I mean, we do no. have goat's cheese that we used to trade, yes. So, palatal goat's cheese is, is a thing. She says, seeming to not understand that you were, you know, being sarcastic. Was he sarcastic? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully my travels take me there someday. I know not where it is in relation to here, I'm afraid. So I could not provide you with directions. Although if we return to the teleportation circle, we could return to where I originally left from. I would also not recommend that. What are you doing here? Seeing the world, she says. Um, Sorrows will perk up at that and smile. Good of re Good of reason as any. Do you not have any intention to return home then? Despite you saying that, I will just add, didn't sound like that was the full truth. Like, she's, like, it's not a flat-out lie, but it's like, she's definitely saying that rather than going into a whole thing, basically. Yeah. Uh, it has been a long time since I was home. Hmm. I'm not sure there is much left for me there. I'll um, I'll keep that in mind, and I'll I'll save it for later. Because I, I realize everyone's just kind of standing around waiting to go. I mean, you can be point. talking about this as you're walking. To be fair. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Okay. Aegis is gone, man. <laughs> yeah, Aegis has ridden down the elevator. Which yeah, means you're then all gonna have to like, you know, use the lever to bring the elevator back up, and then you're gonna have to wait for it, and then you're gonna have to ride it down. It's just. Uh. 
I'm just waiting at the end. Like I was like, oh man, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. I'll refuse to get you know for him to behead it, and everyone's gonna follow along because you know I've got the body, and everyone's just still talking there, and now I'm just standing here waiting. All right. All right. It is another three day journey, unless you want to take it fast and rush it, in which case it will be two days, but you all gain a point of exhaustion. Is there any point in rushing? How are we doing strong. on food? Um, <laughs> that would that'd be the only reason I'd rush, is because I don't know how much food we've all got, because I'm pretty sure we're very, very low. Uh, apologies, I just briefly broke the cameras, because I was posted it in the Dragon Riders chat earlier this week, so... I can fairly I mean, quickly find that answer rather than looking it all up. So Aegis, you have seven rations left. Um... Nerixius, you have 10 hearty breads, but no rations yeah, left. 10 hearty breads is, is like essentially our... 40. Yeah. So. But those I would prefer to be our, like, emergency. Sure. Uh, Sorrows, you have 4 rations left, and the Ruined does have 7. However, they're on his horse, and I'm not going to be mean and take off the free that he didn't have access to. <coughs> like... Uh, technically, he wouldn't have had free rations that he ate on the way there because they are also on his horse. I'm not going to be mean about that, but I mean, I'm going to say they are on his horse so he doesn't have access to the other seven. So in terms of stuff you've got access to right now, you've got access to uh, 11 rations and then 40 worth of hearty bread. I'm just going to check what Zar has rations, I'm pretty sure. Zar does indeed have 10 rations to himself, so that's fine. We can also hunt, no? Yeah, and uh, I think Gion will also have rations. Yeah, so Gion How many and days did you say? Zar will cover themselves. Uh, three days. Three days. Um, yeah, I mean, if we go hunting, maybe? Yeah, I was going to say, if ask if I could hunt. Okay. Uh, me and Soros go hunting separately. If you go like, separately, you'll get separate things, but you're not assisting each other, so it's just flat rolls. Yeah, I think that might work. Okay, then it'll be a survival check. Survival. There you go. Soros, roll me a d6. Norixius, roll me a d8. Sorrows, you kill a rabbit. Good enough. <laughs> it's enough for one <laughs> meal. Uh, Nurxus, you find six rations. I don't what know, do you, I kill? You, you fell a deer. Hell. Hmm. Um, would that include a long rest along the way? Are we too told? It would include free long rests, including and free uh, downtimes, essentially. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, I'm assuming you want to eat your rations as you go, Norixius. So should I just add free to your inventory? Um, don't necessarily have to if those three will cover for someone who doesn't have rations. They probably will, but I'm just like trying to work that out. And then I'm assuming sorry is yours. Yeah, I mean you, you can. One day. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, so it's also like fresh meat, so this should probably be like taken first. That we don't need to get into the, the minutiae of that. That's fine. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, so sorrows, you would then uh, have two days left to cover yourself. You've got four rations, so you would be down to two if you can update that. Yep. Uh, okay. All right, Aegis, you need to cover for yourself. Uh, the ruined. Kytheria and Celeste, so that is going to be... That should be enough, because it's 12, isn't it? 6, 9, 12, yep. Yeah, they've got 14, so that'll be fine. Do I cover for anyone? Uh, do you have 14? I counted it as you only have 7 left. I might have read the weight and not the... I think you did. Yeah, I read the weight. Fuck. <laughs> I already got 7. <laughs> So you need five rations as a group to cover the rest of. Uh... You said we could only hunt once per day, or once, once per, per journey. Journey. Okay. 
well, once per like week of journey, because if you're going on a really long journey, I'm not going to be that mean. Um, yeah. So five rations split amongst the group. You can ask Zara and Gion to, you know, cover you guys if you want, or you can use them from your own rations. As in, it's done, guys. I'm, I'm out. I'm flat broke on food. Yeah, I'm basically talking about hearty bread at that point. I mean, if we have no other options anymore, of course I'm giving out hearty bread, but, like, I want this to be, like, the last resort. Well, you have the free. I still have three to give out to someone, yeah. Three to yeah. give out, and then one Ooh. from Gion and one from Zara. I think that's pretty reasonable. That's, like, a pretty yeah. small ask of them. So, cool. So you're out of rations again. So everyone's out of rations, but Nerexus has the hearty bread, and then uh, Zara and uh, Gion both give you one ration each for the last day. Okay. Downtime activities, what are people doing? Uh, can I do my one one herb collecting this journey? Sure. You okay to teach Peter Iconics ammo? Absolutely. I'm just doing it for if this does forever become important. After I do that, I still want to work on the um, hearty bread recipe, trying to understand it a bit more. Not like that it actually gives me anything, but just in case it becomes important later or whatever. Alright, roll d4, Gallum. Womp womp. Okay. Uh, roll d6 for me. So, Aegis, you go and get some Pixie's Parasol, mm -hmm. uh, some Red Amanita Mushroom, Excellent. Uh, some Fairy Stool, and another Red Amanita Mushroom. Very nice. Did you not add your hearty bird thing to a downtime activity, Summer? Um, I'm I didn't yet because I don't have cooking utensils yet. Ah, oh, okay. So how I'm are you sure trying if... to work out the hearty bird recipe then? Sorry. I mean, um, the rune translated for me last time, so I actually have like the yeah. common version of it. Um, I'm just studying it, like I don't know, like looking at the ingredients I already have, just trying to like understand it better. Okay. Process, you're mentally preparing the... yourself for the day that you'll bake bread. Exactly. So I'm like <laughs> perfectly prepared. I know what to do. Cool. All right. Uh, and then you're teaching Draconic to yeah. uh, Sorrows. Cool. Exactly. Any other downtime activities going on? Uh, yeah, I'm going to do my Rosetta Stone Shid. <clears throat> uh, if my armor counts as magical because it's plus one. Uh, yeah. Excellent. I will do that then. Cool. But, 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 yeah, they'll do that. Nice. And for the last day, I'll be cheeky and ask, uh, Tommy, uh, if I could just go over his axe, because I gave that. Um, a plus one, didn't I? You did. Come on, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Hey. Good rolls. I like the fact that you're studying the runes that you yourself put on his axe. <laughs> yeah. I know it's I was... been like a few days, but come on. <laughs> I'll do it, then. Who... Who put this masterwork on this axe into the meme of Obama giving himself a medal? Yeah. 
If I do say so myself, it's quite a... <laughs> uh, all right. I think that's all my downtime stuff done. Oh, long rest. I should probably do that. Huh? Sorry, I've already done it for you. Oh, thank you. Okay. You arrive back in the city of Orendis on the 23rd of Deep Winter. Um... Cool. Uh, what do people want to do? Suppose um, the main thing to do is head back to the um, king. I don't know, palace is the word for it. The keep and speak to the king. The big tree. Okay. Sec. I'm prepping things, sorry, I'll be one moment. Should have done this in the week off, but oh well. Something. How juicy do you reckon that XP is going to be? Yes. Yeah, we'll cover that in just a moment, by the way. Uh, cool. Very XP. You all gather up in the council chambers of King Arna Draste. Ah! Oh. My friends, you have returned. He says with a big smile. Tell me, how fared you in your venture to help kind Tsar? He says, gesturing at Tsar. The town is cleared. It was overrun with other realmly monstrosities summoned by a banished member of the town. Which, Aegis, do you still have slung over your shoulder? <laughs> I, I do indeed. I'll, I'll, lay them, I'll lay them on the law. She attacked us while we were clearing the area. You hear mutterings from the different council members as they all react to the body being laid on the floor. Um, okay. It is a dark day indeed. You say she summoned these things. That is the theory, yes. Through a weakness in the veil, the teep between ropes. That's powerful magic, says Erdan, the guy who gave you the gifts, uh, the one with the face tattoos down here. As a reminder, he did not speak at all the last time you were in the council chamber, so this is the first time you've heard him speak up in the council. The creature itself, though, has been banished. So unless anything were to re-invite it back here, it shouldn't crop up again. And this veil you speak of, says the king, is it healed? 
it will heal in time. We also found out the cause of it was through. Uh, make my mind that something. I can't. I can't. The ruin is in the way. What's her name again? G Geon. Geon, wasn't it? Yeah. Geon here was teleported to the area. That is what caused the rift. She means no harm. She does seem sheepish as you kind of like draw attention to her in front of the king. My apologies, my king. She says and she gives a slight bow. I'll um I'll look at the king and say she was as much as a victim in this as the rest of them. I see. But our realm is safe, then, he says. Not not. We should go scout just to make sure, not that I don't believe you, you understand, but if we are to send new settlers out that way, we need to be certain. Nifruel. Can you put together a team? Yes, my king. I shall leave at once. And she will excuse herself. My king says Erdan again. I do not believe from my knowledge of Iliandra's abilities, he says, looking at the woman on the floor, the corpse on the floor. I do not believe she would have been capable of doing this on her own. Opening the rift, I mean even with it having a fracture left by teleportation, the ability to rip it open enough for things to come through is no simple task. So you're saying that you believe the land to be safe, but potentially still a threat in our kingdom, says the king, stroking his chin. Yes. Dark machinations. Then I require your help in investigating, he says, looking to Erdan. Try and work out who this person could be. Us? Did you say that out loud? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm genuinely confused. My character. I mean, he <laughs> looks genuinely confused. He... Everyone will turn to you and Erdan will furrow his brow. <laughs> I'm sorry, are you confessing to helping this woman? Wait, didn't he say that he needs uh, help to investigate? The yeah, king they, said, and then I said need Erdan. you to investigate <laughs> to Erdan. And then oh, he said, yes, I'll I thought try and Erdan find said... <laughs> I thought Erdan said and you he went, Wait, our us. help. Okay. Be in the ADHD allegations. No okay, exists. yeah, he is the autistic dragon. Yeah, <laughs> man's just got man just like looked up in the air for a second and then was like, wait, what? Huh? Us? <laughs> <laughs> the, the the king and Erdan seem to have a pretty similar voice. I I mistook. Them. I'm sorry. I've said this many times before. <laughs> My voice acting is varying degrees of gravel most of the time. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just trying to like skip the blame here. Uh -huh. then. Yeah. Yeah, okay. The, the last uh, 20 seconds of my RP didn't happen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not normally how roleplay works. Normally it's a yes and situation and everything's canon. <laughs> 
we'll make an exception here. <laughs> I misunderstood. It's fine. We're not, we're not in Sundered Empire. It's fine. Not everything's uttered in character is actually canon. Yep. <laughs> oh, very well. I shall start my investigations at once. I doubt it, but an autopsy might help. He approaches the corpse. Of course, if she was alive, it would make things a lot easier. Unfortunately, none of us had the luxury of being able to stabilize her. She went down. That's a fault and a half. <laughs> that doesn't Sound really, uh, it doesn't really work with how death works in the song setting. He would have to go into hell to go get a soul, but this dude does have the reincarnate spell. I was like, maybe he can reincarnate her as like a bunny and then talk to her <laughs> as a bunny. <laughs> Man's just like, hmm, it'd be so much easier to just talk to her instead of digging around inside her. Anyway, I'm going off to hell, King. I'll be like a week. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> Meanwhile, just opening more rifts as he goes to another plane yeah. of existence as well. <laughs> uh, he will pick up the body, though, and take her into the room that he took you into previously. Well, you have helped us once more. I will find a home for... Zar, who I assume does not want to return to the village at this time. And you, my friend, he gestures to Gion. While you aren't from here as an elf, we could find a home for you as well. But my friends who aided me so... Uh, selflessly. What can I do for you to show my affection? Help the king twice. What do you want as your second boon? I'll look over to one of the armored guards. <laughs> man, man really just proportions. doesn't understand ah, social ah. cues. And your, <laughs> and your body proportions aren't that of any of the guards as well. <laughs> I just love it. I'm like, thank you for helping man, with this man. slight thing. What would you like? And he's just like, hmm, man. expensive man. armor. Narix <laughs> is just madly in love. He's just. <laughs> what can you say? <laughs> Man's the type of guy to wish for infinite wishes on a wish spell. <laughs> yes, no, please. The the best uh, the, uh, genie wish setup that I've seen so far is spend the first wish however you like, spend the second wish to make yourself immortal, and spend the third wish to turn the genie into an anima anime waifu who will love you for, for as long as you live. Yeah. <laughs> Works. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> the meme I saw that on was then uh, the Punisher meme of uh, Frank Castle going, wait, 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 no, 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 no. And it was in the <laughs> caption that that was the genie <laughs> hearing that third wish. <laughs> Anyways. Um, I don't know. I don't know if anyone would have any objections, but uh, we still, after we leave this territory, we are still stuck in Aladrin territory, and uh, I can surmise that we're not too friendly with them at the moment after what we've done. There, there may be some way that I can, you know, track your relationships with different uh, groups, and uh, yeah, your, your relationship with Valar and Valen it, it might not be great. So maybe a way out without heading through their territory might be a good idea. I mean, we do have your stick. No. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just... 
I mean, but I don't right, know if you, you do guys... have your stick. I don't know if you guys want to uh, want to waste our our boon on just getting out of danger, or whether that'd be something that they consider as a way to get us out, or like I'm... to repay us. I mean, if there is a way, sure, that'd be. Well, you said you said they had um, ties to the Dwarven Kingdom, right? They do indeed have ties to the Dwarven Kingdom. So, if there was a way to get us to there and then f somehow find a, a better way out. I can't remember where the Dwarven Kingdom is in relation on the map. But... That's fine. We can go to the map of Sora real quick. You can also, before asking for a boon, you can also always like have a conversation as a group in character. Uh, you know talk to your companions and such like see what they want to do like all of that is completely valid you can ask the king for a moment yeah. before because can you pop up the, the influence i will in just a moment i'm waiting pop for the map to load for me yeah it's always super quick to load on stream view and then always fairly slow to load for me and it's it pains me there we go <coughs> right so uh this is where you are at the moment, Erendis. Uh, and so all of the... Everywhere the light blue touches is the kingdom of Valen. Uh, and then... Oh, sorry. Everywhere the light blue touches is the kingdom of Urfold. Uh, oh, kingdom of Ascara, the dwarven kingdom. So you've got mm. all of the dwarven kingdom kind of currently blocking uh, Valen from getting to you. Um, but... To get anywhere south, you're right, you do have to travel through a Ladrin territory. Yeah, and we, we ain't too... We ain't too hot with them right now. No. Uh, um, but it's up to you guys, we can always just try and head through to the Dwarven areas and see if we can get, like, a, a ship around the... So, the Dwarven Kingdoms don't have any port cities uh, looking at the map. No, they don't. Uh, however, there is the free port of both Berifor and Zenith. Which are just north of the Dwarven Kingdom. Uh, it's up to you two gentlemen and where you want to go next. But I'd say the Dwarven territories would probably be a smart choice considering we now have these guys somewhat backing us. What makes sense to go to next, um, and maybe requesting a letter of introduction, a letter of introduction, or maybe even a guide, but probably not going to get that. Uh, yeah, a letter of introduction would be would go pretty hard. You can ask yeah. for both if you want, uh, but a uh, letter of introduction, yeah, you can absolutely ask for. Yep. Okay. You know, we could, uh... What's it? <laughs> you rowboat, uh, Cal. We could do that. I was just agreeing. Okay. Uh, in that case, then, as... As my, my people himself has gone, <laughs> I'll, uh, step forward. Okay. If it would... If it would uh, be within your power, um, did we come up with a moniker to actually call the king, or is it just my king? <laughs> like, yeah, his name is King Adraste or King Arnandraste. I don't think you've come up with anything else to well, call him. Just King Adraste then. Um, it may help us if we were to receive some sort of letter of introduction or letter of good standing uh, with the Dwarven Kingdom, as seeing as this is probably going to be our next stop. It would help us on our journey to accrue more allies. I ask you to choose a boon of mine, and you ask me for a letter. <laughs> that I can do, and I would be more than happy to Very well. 
I shall write one post-haste, assuming you would probably want to be on your way sooner rather than later, but you are welcome in the city of Rendis any time. I shall let the scouts of Ildari Forest know if they ever see you approach again. They shall recognize your faces, and they will guide you to us. Thank you, Kate. My leash. Uh, well, I'll also go out saying that we need to get provisions, but we can just buy them, so... Yeah. I mean, we could ask. Hey, man. Just, just for, the king, just for the supplies king's, for the road. The king right now is like, hey, yo, the, we, I, I just said, what do you want? And they just ask him for a letter. That's some mighty... That's some mighty humble shit. <laughs> Don't ruin the image. You can always less... ask for more. It's just up to you. The less you risk we take not. now, the more we get later. Hell yeah, Samo. Think about the autistic it. dragonborn's thinking. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, so he's going to write you a letter of recommendation. Uh, I will add that as an inventory item for Aegis, since he's the one who requested it. Uh, hmm. That may be a thing, but I will give it to probably Sorrows, because I think me arriving as an Eladrin, probably not the best idea to be like, hey, I have this letter of recommendation. <laughs> That's a very fucking good thought. That's all I'll say, because, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'll give it to Sorrows. <laughs> uh... Second. <laughs> okay. Uh, I did put it in Aegis's inventory because I was already in the process of creating it while you were talking about that, but I will put it in Sorrow's inventory now. Hell yeah. Yeah, I can imagine that going really well. It's a very Just a bad a a a a walks in to ask to like meet the king and then just hands him this letter and is like, yeah, the other guy say I'm chill. <laughs> <laughs> Alliance? <laughs> Okay. Uh, cool. I can't be able to move maps, but what else do you guys want to do while in Valen then? Not Valen, um, in right now, in horrendous places. Well, I'd definitely I, like to buy some rations. It's a good show. It's a good show. Mm. So I want to talk about chat with you, right? And I got this cloak that I want to sell. Now, could I roll something? Figure out if, because I mean, this is obviously like an elven cloak, and we're in an elven city. Would I get more money in an elven city for this than in, like, let's say another city? Or would I get less? Because it's, like, more common. Uh, you can roll me an insight check for that. You get the sense that both it wouldn't sell for a lot anyways here. Um, as you say, they are more common. Elsewhere, it would be a much more rare commodity, therefore higher price. But also, you could potentially cause offense by trying to sell what is an item handmade for elves in like a traditional elvish garb of magic. Good point. In going like, oh, I looted this off a dead elf. Do you want to buy it off me? <laughs> okay, yeah, fair enough. Okay, I'll... Um, I do still want to buy cooking or cooking tools or whatever the called. Cooking utensils. Ah, cooking utensils. Cooks utensils, not cooking utensils. Okay, that'll cost you one gold. One? Damn. Can I buy, like, some super fancy ones for ten? <laughs> They won't give you any bonus. <laughs> Damn. Like a stainless steel? Like... <laughs> yeah, you get that one that Gordon Ramsay keeps on <laughs> advertising to me on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. 
Did you remove the gold? Yeah, I did. It is in your inventory. See. All right. How many rations do people want to buy? It costs five uh, silver per ration. So per day of ration. Oh, but twenty. Uh, I'll buy ten. And how much would ingredients for hearty bread cost me if I were to buy them? Because I've still currently have three. So, 20 rations, you said, Sorrows. Oh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, it's just I'm trying to, like, maintain brain <laughs> Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. We can go as fast as Uh, cool, that will cost you one gold, then. Yep. And Not then tip. you wanted to buy 10 rations, Nerxius. Which will cost you 50 silver. Shall I remove that? Nearly gave you ten cooks utensils rather than ten rations there. <laughs> uh, and then you wanted to buy the ingredients for hearty bread. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember how much I said that would cost last time. So let's... I got them for free, so they didn't actually have a price yet. Okay, dog. Uh, 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 fuck it. Fifty silver per per ingredients to make one. Okay. In that case, I'll. Stock up two twenty, meaning I'll buy seventeen. Um, seventeen times fifty. That's like uh, it's eight hundred and fifty silver, 50. so eight, uh, eight and a half gold, or yep. eight gold and fifty silver. Yep. Got it. Sick. Should I just? Oh, you. Yeah. I've also added weight to them because you are carrying them around for free. Uh, so. Yep. Cool. Uh, Aegis, you buying any rations? Uh, yes. 100. I'm assuming you want these in your bag of holding. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think that still might be too heavy, though. So. No, you're good. You still got about half the encumbrance of your bag of holding right now. Yeah. Uh, all right. A hundred rations would cost you uh, five gold pieces. Five gold pieces. Yeah. God damn. The core master be core master. And we'll let the ruin retroactively say how much he wanted to buy if he wanted to buy any. Although, given the fact that Aegis has just bought a hundred, he might go. I'm good. Um. Yeah. Can I also sell my studded leather that I have on me? Yes. Uh, is that in your bag of holding? Yeah. It is in my bag of holding. Studded lever. Cool. Yeah, they will offer you 31 uh, gold pieces and 50 silver for it. Excellent. I'll take that. You can add that to your money then. Uh, 31 expect. gold and 50 silver. Just as a reminder, you can click into it so that it's highlighted all the money and then just plus rather than having to math it. Yeah. Uh, uh, why do I have a lectrum? You shouldn't. That Just turn that into silver. It's fine. So, plus 130 is what I'm going to do to your silver. Um... Cool. Kaetheria uh, will buy 10 rations. Uh, Celeste will buy 10 rations. Uh, what's the name of the city we're in again? It's not uh, else which is it's horrendous. It's oh no. If you look at the map at the top, it should have the name visible. 
Yeah, I'm trying to look for the merchants and I couldn't find them. Uh, there aren't any merchants in the room just yet because I didn't set up fully. So just tell me what you want to find, basically. Um, I don't know if the potions, or not potions, the uh, herbalist stuff would be restocked. They won't have restocked after six days now. A week. So if you stay an extra day, they'll restock, but currently no. Um, in that case... No, I'll leave it for now. Okay. Uh, Dai also bought some rations just so he can look after himself. And then... Uh, Celeste will buy some arrows as well. What the fuck is that noise? Dog. Dog. Dog barking outside my apartment. Might have been that. I'm like a fucked up dog, not gonna lie. <laughs> okay. Anyone buying anything else? Doing anything else? Uh, I wouldn't mind a chat with Gion. If nobody else has anything to do. Okay. You can have a chat with Gion. So. You said you intend to wander the world. With nothing back at home. Where is next for you? I, uh... I really do not know. I was in one place for many, many years and only recently left there, so... I and can't help feel this. Oh, sorry. It did not end particularly well, she says with a weak smile. Hmm. Well, I can sympathize with that. We all can here. Do you mind if I ask what happened? I was staying with some people, but there was a coup, and I was no longer safe there, so I fled. I see. Um, can I roll insight? Sure. Can I see to see if uh, she's hiding some guilt in something or anything there? With a ten, yeah, she is carrying some guilt. What specifically? You're not sure, but yeah, there, there seems to be a tinge of guilt there. I feel there is a lot to this story, though I'm not sure what. We all have uh, burdens we carry. Indeed. Well, do you think you'll stay here or hit the road? I do not know. When I arrived, in that village, Zar introduced me to these people. They are strange to me. But he says that I am one of them. Because I too am Elvish. It's an interesting culture, but it is not mine. I am a foreigner. Do you feel that you could be at home here? I... I truly do not know. Hmm. The idea of kings, as an example, she says. I'm imagining at this point you're like out in the market, but she'll look up at the, the great tree when she says that. That in itself is strange. Well... 
I would have to talk to the rest of my companions, but if you choose to leave, you may travel to the Dwarven Kingdoms with us, if need be, until you find what you're looking for. I would like that. I have never met the dwarf before. Me neither. I must confess I've actually never met one of your kind before either. <laughs> I... I get that a lot in this part of the world. In fact, because you don't try to kill me for it. Nothing wrong with that. She looks surprised at that. Why would I try to kill you? Men mistake me for some kind of child-eating demon. Is, is that a thing in this place of the world? To those who don't understand my kind. I am sorry you've had to go through that, she says, and she will uh, rest an arm, like a hand on your arm, in like a, you know, genuinely sorry. It is fine. Everyone in our crew, they've been mistreated by others, but it's made them stronger. I can understand that. I'll, um... I'll, I'll kind of say it somewhat quietly, but I'll say especially him. And I'll nod over at Aegis. <clears throat> yeah, his power was evident from his banishment spell. He has been through a lot to keep this party safe. So have you, she says. And when she says that, you get the sense that that's not her making an assumption. She, she's still, like, touching your arm at this point, by the way, but, like, she removes her hand as she says it. But you get the sense that, yeah, that's not her making an assumption. That's her knowing that you've done that. Did I see that? Can I roll insight? Can I roll arcana? <laughs> yes and yes. Actually, my insight is a lot better. Could I use insight to see she might have... Is that a thing? Sure. A six isn't good enough, sorry, sorry. That's understandable. With 17, she definitely did something when she did that. You get the sense that she... almost managed to, like, get a read on him through, like... Yeah, touching, uh, actually. Yeah. Okay. You're not sure whether it's with that insight, though. You're not sure whether it's arcane in nature or something else, but... Yeah, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I'll, um... I'll raise an eyebrow at that, not really knowing what to say. Thank you. For what? I'm... I'm not really sure. Your kind words. They are but the truth, she says with a smile. We all do our part. If I am to be traveling with you, I should go prepare. I will talk to the rest of the party. She gives you a little bow and uh, walks away.
I'll, um... Uh, is this... Where are we right now? We're still in the throne room, or...? No, I would say, like, I couldn't be bothered to change the map, but you're just, like, walking around the streets of Arendis, okay. like, getting your supplies and such like, so... Um... I'll walk up to the rest of the group. Ah, hello, Ruin. Do you like my drum? Did you say, ah, uh, hello, Ruined? Ah, fuck. Well, <laughs> we are all ruined. We are all ruined. They also have a knockoff toy. We already established this. <laughs> just, I'm belting. I have just spoke further with Gion and offered her, assuming it's okay with everyone else, if she would like to travel the road with us to the Dwarven Kingdoms. She intrigues me. I'm still unsure about her. Something off about her. I couldn't agree more. She can join for what it's worth, but I'll keep an eye on her. I... They just what about you. If you think it's right, I'm not opposed to having her join us. Ruined. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Somebody change his batteries. Well, for what it's worth, says Kytheria, she, like, you know, piles on some saddlebags onto a horse. If you find her strange, it probably means she fits right in. <laughs> I couldn't have said that better myself. Very well. I Seems would like to have. propose something, says Di. Oh? Us. I agree with your proposal to travel to the Kingdom of Ascara and try and gain the allegiance of the dwarves. We haven't fully discussed what the plan is going forward, but it seems that you're all intent on going to war with Arzamor. And I don't think this is a fool's errand. We need allies to do that, though. We potentially could garner more support more quickly if we split up. Do you have groups in mind? Well, where Celeste goes, I go. But we could always bring a third. <clears throat> I did have a proposal. What's that, Sister Celeste? The way things are going, we have a path. It's looking well. With these elves and the dwarves potentially behind us. We may have a good force. She's going to move to the map of Sorald so we can look at geography as well while we're having this conversation. Because mm -hmm. we might be making plans and such like. But yeah, continue. So, good force. That's the last thing you said. Uh, yeah. I would request trying to bring the Tiefling in on this. The Tieflings are mighty warriors, says Dai. The question is, why would they go to war with Arzamor? Well, personally, I think I, and many other Tiefling, deserve 
to try and claim more land outside of the dangerous jungles that they currently inhabit. Many want more than what they have. Being involved with the world seems like a good way to get a foothold. Political power by helping make a change, says Celeste. Get a on positive the stage, so to speak. A positive change. Shall we deserve a place? If we were heading in that direction, it would be worthwhile also traveling to my homeland. The kingdom of, I of Vires, which is this desert kingdom to the west of the kingdom of, uh, oh god, what is the kingdom of Teron, isn't it? Yeah, kingdom of Teron. So he would be over here and then tieflings would be in the orange I've been thinking about something else as well. It says Dai. To the south, you have the city of Kelencore. Quite possibly the most powerful. Actually, no, sorry. I take that back. He wouldn't call it Kelencore. He would say, yeah. to the south, there is the city. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> It's a major port, but I believe it's under a legend control at the moment. But I was speaking to some of the people here, he says, gesturing around the city. And they say they have a human regent ruling over the city and the local territories. Maybe with temptation of power, they might join the fight as well. Even if the Eladrin themselves won't. Possible. It's possible. They may be conniving, though. Another option might be to try and have them in sight about battle between each other. Keep them distracted while we gain a force ourselves. He strokes his beard and I kind of like, yeah, that could work. <laughs> And what of the orcs? Well, they're your neighbors, says Celeste to you, uh, Soros. The orcs are fine warriors. Uh, what's the relationship with the Tiefling orcs currently? It's not. If there is. Yeah, it's, it's not amazing. They're probably the ones that fight the most because they're neighbors, but also, like, they're not actively at war or anything. There's not, like, yeah. loads and loads of bad blood. It's just also, like, you know, the territories of Stone Bay between them both, which are mostly badlands, to be fair. But, like, you know, there have definitely been spats over the centuries. Comparatively, you also probably have had spats with the Kingdom of Arrest from time to time, which are your neighbours to the west. Um, yeah. But that would probably be mostly either tieflings instigated, like, tiefling raiding parties getting you know, in territories they probably shouldn't go to, or humans preactively going, ah, those bloody tiefling raiding parties, we better go and slaughter a village that had nothing to do with it because of that yeah. sort of thing. So it's, you know, who started it, who can say, but, uh, yeah. Makes sense. Um... For instance, just as like a little tidbit, that you've got this place right here. Hold on, let me shift ping. Uh, Tardiel Sul. That used to be a tiefling settlement. So, like, okay. there's enough bad blood that they've, like, claimed a territory that used to be tiefling territory. The orcs are fine warriors, but we don't have much of a relationship with them. I couldn't tell you how viable they would be. And what about that uh, kingdom of Elysia? We visited Nilnaid before we reunited with you, says Dai, gesturing at Celeste. 
Where, sorry? Kingdom of Elysia. Uh, this kingdom. Ah. The one south of Arzimor. They are a relatively new kingdom, though. Not as much power, maybe, but a decent foothold in terms of geographically. Not as far away from Arzimor as some of the other places. That could also be a curse, I suppose. It'll certainly be a very strong point in a way of uh, wall borders. It's highly defensible with uh, little land routes, unless the uh, Azamorians go through the mountains. Which the dragons can do, but foot soldiers, that's a difficult journey. Making like... the Azamorians fight on two fronts is also going to be better. Agreed. It would at least give us a good port to the border of Azamor from the rest of the world. So we've got lots of different places we want to try and get to eventually, and that's a lot of distant lands that we need to travel to. Earthhold seems like the most logical step, but should we split off now, or should we stick together as a full group for now? Basically, just to peel back the roleplay for a moment and talk about mechanically, if you want to send Celeste and I, and potentially Kyferia, if you wanted to send Kyferia to have a third with them, um, to another kingdom, they can start trying to build relationships. What I will then do is kind of like just decide some stuff that goes down behind the scenes. It will play out in real time. If you get there not that long after them, then potentially you can help them build that relationship and it will just like start off better because they've already like laid groundwork for you. But mm. if you like leave them to it long enough, then either they will be successful or they will be unsuccessful and you'll get news of that eventually. But that like you could, something to do. Yeah, and it just means that you can basically like. You don't have to get every single kingdom on your side to go fight Arzamor. It's just the more allies you have, the more likely it is to be easy for you to eventually overthrow them. The overthrowing them is kind of an inevitability in the sense of we know that Celeste eventually becomes king. Um, but like how long that takes in game and what have you, you know, the more allies you have, the more likely you are to be able to like beat Arzamor down essentially. I mean, I like that idea. So building, like splitting your party and sending friends and companions off to do stuff for you means that in theory it takes less time in game, but also if you want to be there doing it all personally, then you can just stick together as a large group. It is up to you. How about since traveling in a small group, probably <coughs> easier, that we send those three off to Caloncore to do their stuff and we work on what is what is this light blue? Haskara. That's the Dwarven Kingdom. Yeah, the Dwarven Kingdom. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> it's also just worth kingdom. noting, like they they're not kingdoms, so they're not like one big political power. But you can also visit any of like the free lands and see if you can muster up any other support there as well. Yeah, it's just that like if you went to Zenith, you wouldn't also get the people of Oxhope on your <laughs> side because they're two completely different settlements with no relationship yeah. beyond potentially trading. But uh, you can still obviously hit those as well. Yeah, I was gonna suggest we actually send uh, Celeste and two others to Celeste's kingdom, because he pretty much needs to be there for that. It doesn't need to be; it's just where he's from. But like, he he's not like he's not someone of note from there. He's a commoner's son, mm. but mm. it's just a territory he's familiar with. Yeah, I just I'm just not sure how far I want to send them away. Because Kalinkor is, I think, already pretty far away from where we are. Do you have the sending spell at all? Tending? No. Sending. We have um, the ruins here. Is that, like, similar? I think that's got a limitation on it. I'm just thinking maybe you don't split the group up until you have a way of communicating, like, a sending spell. And there are, like, magic items that allow you to send, like, sending stones and what have you. So, like, maybe that's a thing. I just basically wanted to introduce this concept so that you we know... We could ask that, like... the king if he has something like that for us. 
you could ask for a second no, boon. You absolutely could. Uh, let me just look at the ruins thing, though, because it is a valid point. Uh, what is his pulling off his hair thing? Problem is, sometimes with D&D, when you're taking control of another player's character, is that they don't always say what things they're using, so you have to, like, quickly scan through all the stuff. Yeah. I think it's Eerie Token. Yeah, it's Eerie Token. Cool. Um... Uh, buh, 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 buh. Within 10 miles, so yeah, it's a limitation of 10 miles, but still pretty useful to have, but yeah, 10 miles is more than a day away, basically, or less than a day away, sorry. I mean, yeah, we can maybe ask King if he has like a scroll, maybe a magic item, maybe something like that. Okay. If you want to try and beseech another boon from the King beyond the letter, I'm going to say that's a persuasion check. But I'll do it. I will say I'm looking at sending stones right now. They're not like crazy, crazy, crazy rare or anything. So like, <laughs> I think persuasion wise, best. If you want to do it, you can do it. But before you do it. Oh, oh, never mind. My bad. I was gonna, oh, it's fine. I was going to set up as an epic roll. <laughs> oh, okay. It's fine. it's fine. You got an 18, and 18 is pretty good. Uh, yes, uh, we we have some sending stones that we use for our, uh, our army. I can certainly spare two. That's not a problem. That should be enough. One for each group. Yep. Cool. He provides you with two sending stones, then. Uh, um, yeah, you can give one to... Celeste, die, whatever. Okay, and who wants um, to have the other one? Maybe... Eight, just? Maybe, perhaps. Otherwise, Soros can have it. But Age is like our magic dude, so maybe Ages. I mean, the stone's a stone. Alright, putting it in his <laughs> inventory. Uh, you have this sending stone. Does not require a uh, attunement. Uh, so just to explain how it works, sending stones come in pairs, so with each, uh, so, so like when the king said they used them throughout the army, they have various scouts who use them to talk to each other because it is one-to-one. -one. Um, so sending stones come in pairs with each smooth stone carved to match the other, so the pairing is easily recognized. While you touch one stone, you can use an action to cast a sending spell from it. The target is the bearer of the other stone. If no <laughs> creature bears the other stone, you know the fact as soon as you use the stone and don't cast the spell. Once sending is cast through the stones, they can't be used again until the next dawn, so it is one message per day. And if one of the stones in the pair is destroyed, the other one becomes a non-magical stone. Uh, the sending spell... Oh, hold on. The sending stones don't have the sending spell on them. That's a problem. Problematic. It's fine. It's very easy to add it on. I've just removed the sending stone from your inventory temporarily, Callum. It is now back in your inventory, Callum. Uh, and cool, that should appear, yeah, at the bottom of your spell book. You've got the sending spell as well now. Um... Uh, so it's a message of 25 words or less to a creature with which you are familiar. The creature hears the message in its mind, recognizes you as a sender, uh, and if it knows it's you, and can answer in a like manner immediately. Uh, you can send the message across any distance <coughs> and even to other planes of existence, but if the target is on a different plane than you, there is a 5% chance that the message doesn't arrive. So yeah, no, no limitation in terms of distance, but it is 25 words per day. That's the limitation. Very nice. Okie doke. Anything else that people want to do uh, before... Heading off. No, I'm all done. Same. Same. Okay. 
So just to confirm then, sorry, you're sending uh, Celeste and Dime. Were you also sending Kaifiri? Because that was just like Dai saying, like, if you want to send a third person in theory, it's easier for them. But if you want to keep Kaifiri, that's absolutely fine. So currently we're us four, the new uh, person. And Kaifiri. And possibly Kaifiri. Yeah. That was... So basically, like. in terms of number of companions, <laughs> you're down one net worth. I think if you keep Kyferia. I think this choice makes sense to be made by Soros. That's for me. I'm okay. I'm okay to send Kyferia, but it's, it's ever, whether everyone else is okay losing a third companion or not. I mean, we can always leave it till next session even. as well and uh, let Alex chip in. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Cool. Okay, so next session we'll decide who is splitting off, but. Uh, Celeste and Co. plan is to go to uh, Kelencore. Yeah. Or as Di put it, the city, and everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about? There's lots of cities. Mm -hmm. No one. Oh, didn't even move Sora's there. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, I reckon leave the journey to next time as well. Yeah. So, unless anyone wants to do anything else before we wrap up, I think we probably just wrap up there then. That makes sense. With the next steps forward, which is you guys going to Earthhold. Yep. Cool. I've got to prep some Dwarven stuff now. Yep. Looking forward to it. Yep. Okie doke. Well, I hope you all had fun. I hope you Did. are ready for some very Dwarvish voices. Damn. Last time my character, like... Did something with a dwarf in this campaign. Rough. Well, don't slit the king's throat and it'll probably be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's easier said than done. I mean... or, or do slit the king's throat and then try and roll a persuasion check to convince everyone that you're a, a fucking dwarf and that you're Guys, the new king. It just was like, necessary. Just yep. like when Soros was like, oh no, he's an orc. <laughs> yep. He's an orc who just doesn't moisturize. I just realized that I flat out told um told her that I've never met a dwarf on well, like very much have <laughs> <laughs> just meant nothing to me you, you thought that dude was just a very short man <laughs> yeah it was a halfling all right We'll see you hopefully next week. I don't know. I will double check my work calendar before completely committing, but I'm pretty sure I'm free next Wednesday. So see you all next week for more Dragon Riders. Song of the Damned. Callum, play us out. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.